Hello and welcome back everybody to the GDQ Hotfix. I am so excited to be back. I just came back from Awesome Games on Quick 2024. I imagine a lot of everybody here is uh, tuning in from having watched that all last week. I had an amazing time. I hope everyone enjoyed watching it. And I need to mute the stream because I actually left it on. But <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I scared myself with my own voice. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited, and I thought, what better way to welcome everybody back to the GDQ Hotfix again? Our kind of our programming between the main GDQs. Uh, I thought, I thought, no better way to bring it back than with one of my favorite speedruns that I've hosted in the past, Monster Hunter World Xeno Percent. This time, we got a race between two of the best runners at the category. I'm super excited for this, and I think I'll just go ahead and throw it to Jao to start introducing. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, hi, my name is Jao Bagel. Uh, this is Monster Hunter World Xeno Percent. I am joined by Green Speed. Say hi, Green. Hello. And uh, DJ Johnny. Say hi, Johnny. Hi, Johnny. See, he follows instructions. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, this is this is Monster Hunter World Xeno Percent. Uh, so Green and I are uh, first and third on the leaderboard. Green is first. I'm third. Um, and this is I mean, this is like the high level execution of the game. Um, it's really cool to kind of see our two routes side by side. Um, and we're going to talk a bunch about this game. If you have questions, ask them in chat. Johnny's going to look out for them. And we'll try to answer them, too. Um, but yeah, Green, do you want to tell before we get into it, you want to tell everyone a little bit about the category? Uh, yeah, so this is uh, any percent. There's no real restrictions, which does mean we can use the Defender weapon and Guardian armor which were added by Capcom right before the Iceborne expansion to let people speed through the base game a little bit faster. Uh, it makes the run a lot faster and, more importantly, a lot more consistent because we are guaranteed the materials we need for all of our weapon upgrades. Yeah, it, it makes speedrunning this game a lot of fun. Um, so uh, the race in this game is a little weird because if you make like one mistake, you end up losing 30 seconds a minute sometimes. Uh, so what we're going to do, especially since we like to take breaks on Hotfix, right? Um, we're going to take breaks ourselves. Uh, so after the Zora 1 quest, the Zora 2 quest, and Xeno, obviously, we're going to kind of checkpoint those. So three segments, that means it's the best of three. So um, each time we'll we'll pause at uh, that spot and let the other person catch up, and then we'll take our break. Uh, I figured that'd be a great way to uh, to do this. Um, I think we could just like jump right into it, and then we just start talking about the run. Are you ready, Green? I am ready. Uh, all right, Johnny, uh, how about you give us a uh, countdown on go? Yep. All right. So, three, two, one, go. So, the first thing that you're going to notice right off the bat is um, we are cheating. We're using Cutscene Skip Mod. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are uh, one hour and three minutes of unskippable cutscenes in this video game. Um, we're both running on PC, so we have this super awesome mod to uh, allow us to skip those cutscenes. Um, the nice thing, too, is, is that on the leaderboard, our timer uh, is an auto splitter and will pause during cutscenes. So, you can actually use those as like little breaks very nice quality of life thing for this game uh you know get a little breather in between uh it's a timed break um but you know it's still it's still really nice because some of the cutscenes are like minutes long it's it's real nice um but yeah so this is this is monster hunter world if you've never seen this video game before don't worry it doesn't make any sense to us either um it's exactly what it sounds like you hunt big monsters and wear their uh parts as armor that's pretty much it. Uh, but we'll talk a little bit more about the uh, the run decisions here. Uh, there's 14 weapons in the game, and we're mainly going to use two. Uh, very early on, Green and I will be using different weapons. Um, we'll both start out with Sword and Shield and Switch Axe, but we'll use them on different hunts. Uh, Green will predominantly use uh, like a good mixture of 50-50. I will be using mostly Switch Axe uh, at, the, at the beginning. Um, and it's really just like a comfort decision. Um, there's like, a, was it 15 seconds in... Zora one, uh, you said? yeah, fifteen twenty. Yeah, so about fifteen twenty seconds difference, um, in in using sword and shield versus uh, switch axe. Sword and shield being faster. Um, this is a comfort thing for me. I per personally prefer the switch axe scripts. Um, we're gonna say that a lot too. Scripts. Um, that's scripting out the fights. What this game lacks in uh, skips and exploits, it makes up for in pure execution. This game is super tight and a lot of fun. Um. It, it's just a, a gauntlet of just really clean gameplay. Um, let's see. We're in a tutorial. There's two new mechanics that are introduced in Monster Hunter World, uh, stealth and track gathering, and we are forced to do both of those. <laughs> uh, 
Um, uh, unfortunate thing about track gathering, if you've ever played this game, you got to a point where you had to uh, gather Elder Dragon tracks. There's a lot of variability to that section. So we are actually using a practice mod to make sure that we both get the same uh, track patterns. So we are on the same RNG. Uh, so that does invalidate our runs for the leaderboard, but we're taking breaks anyways. So makes for a better race if one of us just doesn't lose a minute and a half for no reason. Right? I, I have a... I have a question. Uh, Green, can you explain what Xeno Percent means for those who uh, have never played this game? Uh, yeah, so the final boss of the game is called Xeno Jiva. And uh, Monster Hunter games are always kind of weird on where the speedrun categories end, so we generally name the category after the monster we kill to finish the run. And that's, that's effectively like the any percent category for this game, right? Yes, credits do roll after that quest. Cool, cool. Yes, this game in progression is kind of weird. It, that would be like first credits, right? Because we get a second credits in the DLC. Um, right, in right. Iceborne. Well, that's like DLC percent, right? So the, the naming nomenclature is a little little weird. And, and this run does technically use Iceborne, right? Yeah, so we, we are both running uh, with Iceborne installed or on the latest patch. So you'll see us use uh, Clutch Claw. We'll have Claggers. Um, we have Iceborne Balancing. All of those things are still in this game. Um, sorry, I'm paying attention to my menu here. <laughs> Losing my train of thought. But yeah, you'll, you'll see us use all those same tools that are in, in Master Rank. And uh, those tools, too, really opened up our ability to script, especially Clutch Claw and Claggers, uh, because that included a bunch of uh, different ways to control monsters. Um, and you'll see, uh, and, and Green's going to talk about a bunch of the scripts because he's much better at them than I am. Uh, and much better at explaining them than I am. Uh, but he's gonna, we're going to be talking about a bunch of uh, scripts as we progress through the game. And um, a lot of them are, are, you know, we use the clutch claw at the very beginning because it's just such a, a versatile tool. Uh, so this is uh, pretty much the end of the tutorial, though. Um, I can't see green stream, but I'm assuming he's probably at the same spot as I am. Yeah, he is. <laughs> just moving uh, but, the track. Yeah, yeah, same. Uh, okay, cool. We're like perfectly synced up. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, you guys are neck and neck right now. Um, do you guys know Critical Role or any video game that's ever been made? <laughs> Hi, this is Matt Mercer. <laughs> He's going to come back up again later. Um, also known as Field Team Leader or FTL. Um, that's it. <laughs> it's Matt Mercer in English, but we're not playing in English. Green, what language are we playing in? Uh, so this is the Monster Hunter language. Um... It's basically just gibberish, but the nice thing about it is their sentences are very short, and there are quite a few areas where uh, text clearing is linked to the duration of the voice line, not to your mashing speed. So overall, it saves about 40 seconds over the whole run to run this over English. Mm -hmm. Free time save. <laughs> Man, it took me a long time to get used to not running this game in English. <laughs> and look at you now. I know. I don't remember <laughs> half the lines, thankfully. There's a time where I could just like recite the entire script of this game. Mm -hmm. uh, so in this section, you'll see us uh, kind of walk around the NPCs. There's two sections in the game where we're forced to walk next to NPCs. Um, there's a radius around them that reduces our speed to a walking speed. Um, we can't escape this uh, in this upcoming thing. This is a Mercer skip. Uh, we're going to be able to get out of this walk radius and run across the bridge up here a lot faster than normal. Um, we're going to do this twice. We're going to do it again later uh, with the Admiral. Um, but it, it's it's a weird little thing, right? Because as long as we're close to him, we're walking. And we want to get away from him as, as fast as possible. Um, and once you do Mercy Skip right once, it's really hard to to fail it. Um, once in a blue moon, we'll, like, we'll fail it. But yeah, it'll, it'll happen. Just like some weird movement. Or maybe we cut a corner like way too quick. But... Um, usually it's it's pretty pretty easy and it loses mm -hmm. like uh like five ten seconds something like that uh mm -hmm. ten if you go for it and miss it i haven't timed out <laughs> not going for it yeah um but we'll be making weapon choices here soon both green and i are going to start with sns oh here's mercer skip i should probably just let this happen Ooh. first and yeah. we yeah, um that easy <laughs> yeah it, it, you know once you once you start running you just make a hard left turn and you're out of there mm -hmm. um whoops 
So this is where uh, the Monster Hunter language is important for the dialogue skip. So there are going to be certain times where we can't, um, we have to wait for the dialogue to finish. Um, that's just how it's linked up. We don't know why. Um, but for the most part, we're able to just mash through all of this text uh, because of that Monster Hunter language being a lot faster than um, the other languages in the game. Okay, so we'll be making our first uh, weapon choice here. Shoutouts to Hog and a Frog Percent, the best speedrun <laughs> category of the game. Um, 12 minutes long to unlock the Pookie, uh, Poogie's Hog and a Frog costume. Um, but I was labbing that out and found that doing this menu with mouse and keyboard is just a lot faster, a couple seconds mm -hmm. faster. And there's actually going to be. Hey, a I'm proud of where... this. Yeah, no, I mean, I don't. <laughs> it's a good thing. It's the I love freest this. thing ever. It's great. Yeah. Yeah, so... no, it's awesome. And there's going to be times where we're also going to be using the mouse and keyboard for other um, menuing shortcuts, opening maps and such. Ooh, hey, you're fine. <laughs> cool. See, um, easy. Yeah. <clears throat> but the game defaults us to uh, Sword and Shield, and so we are going to be using Sword and Shield um, for this for this very first hunt. The first hunt is Joggers of the Ancient Forest. Um, Green, what is Joggers of the Ancient Forest? Uh, it's a quick little hunt where we need to kill seven small monsters, and uh, we actually get to manipulate their AI a little bit. Because once we kill two of them, uh, the rest are going to try and run into their little cave. But we can actually set up uh, a couple little uh, campfires on the ground. So the ones running into the cave will get caught on those campfires and die. So we'll only need to run into the cave and kill one more instead of the five more that we would normally need to. Mm -hmm. uh, what's really cool is that this is one of the... One of the strategies that has been in this speedrun since the beginning. Uh, it's it's really cool. The only thing that does this a little bit faster, I think, was Lance, but I can't remember exactly. I know Charge Blade used to be the fastest, but I think this SNS script is actually faster now. Yeah, yes. this this SNS script is now faster than the, the old Charge Blade script. Mm -hmm. I, and I love that Charge Blade script. I spent What's hours fun? on that charge blade script. <laughs> um, a lot of the early uh, the early fights for us though are just you know precise movement. Move in the fast good way is better than the slow bad way. So this is where the group of jaggers are going to be. Um, so the goal is to try to kill at least two or um, minimum two. So we can go in. Nice. Uh, Bigel got three of them. Because uh, they grouped up there, and now he's going to place the torch pods down um, and continue on slaying the rest of the Jagras here in the little cave. Nice. You said bagel. I want it to be known that that was absolutely green because I messed that up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, so this, uh, this is going to be the... Uh, we do get end timers uh, during these hunts, by the way. Um, whenever you slay a monster, you get a 60 second end timer. Um, and then whenever you capture a monster, you actually get a 20 second end timer. So for a lot of the monsters that we have moving forward, uh, we're going to be capturing them, uh, excluding uh, the Elder Dragons at the end of the run. Um, so right now we're going to be doing uh, some gathering, some sleep herbs, some uh, honey, some webs. Um, these are going to be tools that are essential for crafting uh, trank bombs and the future uh, traps that we're going to be using, both the pitfall and the shock. Uh, and then I believe Bagel starts setting up his part of his radio here. Got it. All right. Nice. Ten seconds to put those four things on that radio <laughs> menu, and it is not easy. Speed. <clears throat> uh, so at the end of these first couple of quests, we are looking out for specific RNG. Um, green, I don't know. Are, are you going to go for, uh, I guess you are going for Greenbone in the pile, aren't you? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So green's going to try to uh, get a time save and go for the Greenbone in a pile. Um, I usually just take it from quest rewards and I already got my first Greenbone, but I didn't get any um, small monster bones, unfortunately. Uh, and we do need both to make the low rank bone chest uh, after Zora one. Uh, so even just even with defender gear uh, and guardian, guardian armor and defender weapon, we still are trying to make 
uh, other equipment. Uh, and that's the only other piece of equipment that we are going to make. Uh, but right now, we're going to be equipping our defender weapons. Uh, Johnny, what makes these so good? Uh, yeah, so like Green had mentioned earlier, uh, Capcom was uh, happy enough to gift us these defender uh, weapons. Um, essentially, they're powered up versions of the weapons we currently have, um, but they do have an added element to them, which is the blast element. Um, that essentially just gives us a little bit more DPS during our fights. Um, and it makes the run that much more uh, speedy. Yep, guaranteed upgrades, big damage. By the end of this run, we'll have the best weapon base game uh, because of the defender weapons. They're just that good. Uh, so we're both using Switch X here. Um, after Pookie Pookie, Green will be switching to SNS. So for the next two hunts, we'll both be using uh, Switch X. This is Kestadon Kerfuffle. Um, there's a lot of bit of RNG associated with this. This is the second small monster hunt. Um, we want these Kestadon to group up in a way that we can slay them quickly. And, uh, you know, like Johnny mentioned, the weapon has the blast ailment. Uh, a blast proc outright slays these. Um, if not, four attacks from the uh, switch axe will also. So I got a blast proc there. Green, how'd you do? Uh, pretty good. Did an extra circle attack by accident, but it's fine. Same. Yeah, same. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes you like uh, input that just a little too early or you just don't expect the blast proc to happen. Um, and Switch Axe has a little um, extra mechanic. Uh, the top left of our screen, you see that like blue sword. Uh, that is the charged file uh, or amp state. And in amp state, your sword mode attacks do an extra little like explosion of damage. Um, that little explosion happens after your sword hit and can also cause a blast proc. So it's usually after we do an input. Hmm. Unfortunately, Green did get the bad RNG of the Kestodon just moving away from his head. Uh, so he's going to take a little bit longer here to get the rest of the Kestodon. Um, I got good Kestodon. And Bagel did get the good Kestodon. <clears throat> uh, I got yeah. the good RNG roll. Mm -hmm. um, but that'll happen. Uh, it's like we said, it's the roll of a dice. Just are they going to be grouped up or not? Um, but next yep. up... Next up, we're going to be seeing uh, Great Jagras, and we're going to be coming up to Capris. Uh, Green, do you mind explaining Capris for us? Uh, yeah. So, like Johnny mentioned earlier, you can capture monsters uh, to shorten the quest end timer. That was what all the gathering we did at the end of the last quest was for, was so we can capture this monster here. Uh, for the first, like, three or four years of running this game, we didn't think it was possible, but it turns out there is just enough material around to pull it off. Mm -hmm. um, and then part of Capris is going to be using some of the environmental uh, traps that we have in the game. Um, one of them is going to be a rock drop right on top of uh, Great Jagras. Um, so the way this usually goes is uh, we'll do the rock drop, place a pitfall trap, uh, and then start drinking the monster and then start damaging the monster. Um, with Switch Axe, it usually goes well. Uh, they're sometimes... <laughs> There's sometimes uh, where it may go awry, but uh, we'll let the run speak for itself in a bit. I um, mean, you can see how it actually plays out. Yeah, the nice uh. thing here is that the environmental trap is uh, the animation for the environmental trap is going to overwrite uh, the pitfall animation. So the pitfall won't happen until they stand up. And that's what makes this possible. Mm -hmm. I got a very weird angle. Nice. Vigo has gotten Capris. And Green has gotten Capris. Good job, both. Close. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, um, the really cool thing is, is that, um, so we, we did a practice last night, and we were within, uh, like, three or four seconds of each other for the first 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. That's and, pretty wild for, an, yeah. like, average speed on race, for sure. Um, and so with any luck, we will actually be with like four <laughs> seconds within each other, four or five seconds within each other for a while. Mm -hmm. um, so one thing we do need to know, um, like we mentioned, trapping monsters is the goal here. Um, with tranks, there is a uh, a limit on how long the trank lasts on the monster. I believe it's 20, 
seconds? No. It's, question mark. It's different for it, every it, monster. It, it, it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we try to we try to damage the monster as soon as we can. But with a lot of the scripts that uh, both Green and Bagel have worked on, um, they've kind of timed it out where they know uh, when exactly to start drinking the monster as well as trapping it. Uh, so next up, we're going to going into our first expedition uh, assignment, um, and you'll actually see some more of that mouse and keyboard um, manipulation, or not manipulation, but uh, tech here. Um, so both Green and Big are going to be using their mouse to hover over the ancient forest uh, because using the controller takes forever, and you can just hover right over it and click it right away, uh, and off they go. So expeditions, uh, we do have uh, different type of quests here. Expeditions are free roam you get to go in hunt as much as you want there's no timer uh if you cart you, you have unlimited carts uh things like that um so the neat thing about this is that we don't have to wait for an end a quest timer at the end of the hunt um which we're going to be doing for kulu uh, yeah the nice thing then, is is that the moment we trap it we can just leave correct it's very very and nice green has come across uh Anjaneth, uh that <gasps> is <laughs> I get to uh, that, show it off. Yeah, so there are times where uh, Anjanath will just um, special guest into the Kulu uh, portion of the run. Um, all we do is just look in the ground, don't pay attention to them, and just run past them. Um, that way we don't get his aggro and we're able to uh, skip a piece of dialogue here that would come up if we did uh, engage with uh, Anjanath. Shoutouts to strategies from Pokemon Snap Speedrun. <laughs> <laughs> just look at the ground. Yeah. Obviously, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, so Bigel, do you want to talk about what's so special about Kulu? I love this fight. <laughs> uh, this is actually, so when Iceborne came out, we didn't know that Switch Axe was really good. And then another runner used Switch Axe and saved like 30 minutes on their first, uh, the first time they ever did it. And then I did it and saved 45. Um, and this was the, like this fight we, like I ad libbed it and got the script just right the first time. Um, which is really funny, but this is Kuliaku. Uh, when you flash Kuliaku, he stands perfectly still. Uh, other monsters will like attack randomly, not Kulu. If he can't see, he can't fight. Uh, so that gives us a huge opening to do our, um, CSD scripts. And this is predominantly the reason why we're going to be using switch X, uh, earlier in the run, or at least I am, uh, because of a little strategy called, uh, clagger chaining. So we're going to use, uh, ZSD to chain together claw staggers. And uh, that's what's going to allow us to just lock down these monsters. So that is a clagger uh, that just happened on my screen. I'm not going to be using interacting with it how the game wants me to, but I will be ZSDing. And then we just got to wait for AI here. Fortunately, I got the slow AI. Then we just clutch claw right back on. Uh, one thing to note, too, is uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of viewers are wondering how we know uh, when to trap a monster. Um, nice. Both. I redeemed well myself. I redeemed myself <laughs> from the first hot fix. That was supposed to happen that time. <laughs> Not leave early. Smile. <laughs> we did it. Uh, but one thing to note when you're trying to capture monsters is that uh, the monster will drop a uh, stinger pod ammo. Um, after two drops, uh, that's when uh, we know to that the monster is ready to capture. Um, so if anybody's wondering, hey, how do they know when it's ready? That is one of the your fire ways to know we've also done this a lot um but the that scripts too. get us <laughs> the scripts get us to a capturable point um where we know either we are cap ready or very very close to it uh and that's really evident on pookie pookie uh especially this quest we're gonna try to do three zsds in any way that we can get them really uh and then after that third one we're gonna uh trap and wild swing while it's in the trap uh if we do really good damage and get good blast uh blast procs it'll capture the moment we put the trap down um and if not then you know we'll just have to do a couple hits and it usually is it's this is usually pretty safe but um the only other piece of rng here is i mean anjanath just loves the ancient forest this is his like this is his place <laughs> and he show up on this quest too he can actually show up on like the majority of these it's really funny um if we get him it's at best a 25 second time loss and at worst like a minute yeah, it looks I like have Bagel. Him. Oh yeah, uh -oh. I was gonna say Bagel's in the clear, green is not. So now green has to go and gather these uh dung pods. Uh which is exactly what it is. You throw poop the monster and it causes the monsters to run away. 
because reasons. <laughs> RNG diff. And there goes Anja. Now Green can go ahead and start the fight. Nice. So Green did get the uh, Poison Cup started as well. So that'll help out in damage. And so Bega's going to go ahead and continue doing the rest of his radial uh, setup here. And Green's already seen two pod drops there, so now he's going to get ready to trap. <coughs> and there, nice. And that's Spooky. That's Pooky. Ooh, okay, I did get a low rank sack. All right, we're good. I got my backup sack. Uh, we do only have like a couple of points of like monster RNG. Um, Pooky is one of them. We'll fight Pooky twice, and once in low rank and once in high rank. Um, both times he can drop a uh, a poison sack. Uh, if we get the low rank one, that's the backup. We want a high rank poison sack just to make sure that we can make the high rank uh, cat weapon, so we can get a little bit of extra damage in the last fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, so now we come to the best kind of quest, um, which I know it's really funny to say, but it really is the best kind of quest. Um, also, a little note here. We can't skip this cutscene. Uh, if we try to skip it, we get soft locked. <laughs> so we just yeah. don't try. <laughs> it's a cool game. Um, but the really neat thing about this quest is that this is where we get at least uh, a good portion of our uh, materials that we need for uh, the rest of the hunt or the rest of the uh, run. Um, so we're going to be you're going to see us gathering a lot of sleep herbs, uh, god bugs, uh, nitro shrooms and a bunch of other stuff that we're going to use for the run. Um, so really quick, what the runners are going to do is they're going to go back to camp. Uh, they're going to be doing some item management. Um, and then unfortunately, we do have to say goodbye to the Palicos. Um, one of the things that the Palicos do is that sometimes they'll grab the monsters aggro um and will cause some of the screws to kind of go awry so to kind of prevent that and limit any sort of wacky uh monster ai we just leave the cats behind um i don't think johnny mentioned it yet but the other reason why this is the best kind of quest is uh it's an escort mission <laughs> so we are kind of on the rails which is why we get all of this extra time to do like this gathering, this um, you know item management. Uh, we we get to get uh, unlock the tutorial at the uh, canteen. Um, we and, and in the camp, we try to do as much of this in this quest because we're on a timer anyway. So we can't we can't speed this up or slow this down any more than than we already are. Um, mm -hmm. But there are three checkpoints that we have to reach to progress the uh, the quest. So we're just gonna be trying to to make sure that we meet those. Um, oh, Green, what else is there to say about this quest? Uh, <laughs> uh I switched to sword and shield here. Oh, there it oh, is. Oh, yeah, he switched. Yeah, there we go. Uh, that's, some, that's something. Yeah, so Green's yeah. on sword and shield now, and I'm on switch axe. So you're going to see a couple different scripts here, uh, which is really cool, too. Um, the, the, the SNS scripts are a lot of fun. Uh, Green, why do you use the SNS scripts over the switch axe scripts? Uh, consistency and speed. Um, the SNS scripts are execution wise harder than switch X, but there is a lot less RNG associated with them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, they do save, uh, about 15 seconds total when you account for all the extra menuing you need to do. So I'll just go faster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was, it's been mentioned a couple of times about RNG. Um, what, what RNG is, do you have to deal with regularly in the run besides, like you mentioned the track stuff, but that's obviously fixed for this race, mm -hmm. but outside of that, right? Uh, predominantly with switch axe, it's blast procs, right? Mm -hmm. The weapon has an ailment that's called blast. Um, one in every three hits is going to cause an explosion, which is a fixed amount of damage that's going to happen to the monster. And that can really affect the scripting, uh, right? Because all of your scripting is based on the damage dealt. Uh, so that's one of the bigger reasons why green is using SNS because it has a little less of an impact because you're not dealing as many hits, but you are doing more damage. 
Also, uh, um, could, we, could we re-explain scripts again? There's a bunch of new people have come in since yeah, last time we explained yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So, um, yeah, because we, we really don't don't explain scripts. Um, so, like, think of a play, right? You have you have all of your actors. You hand all the actors a script, and they're, they're supposed to do all of the actions uh, from start to end in the way that the script says, um, which is awesome. And when that happens, you have a beautiful play and everything goes really, really well. And, and it goes like a little bit faster or like as intended. But then like sometimes you have someone who doesn't read the script and then um, that throws the, the, the scene off in a, a, a little bit, you know, and now we have to ad lib a little bit. So it takes a little bit longer to get through it. And, um, you know, it's still it's still just as great to see because, you know, the actors get to uh, get to, you know, act on the spot. Right. Same thing here. We have a preset uh kind of strategy um we are going to do the exact same things every single time to try and get these hunts as fast as possible um speed running monster hunter comes down to scripting because there are no fancy clips there are no fancy glitches or anything like that it's all execution based and that's in full game speed running, which is what we're doing and then also individual levels which most people are familiar with when you're taking like end game gear and going in and fighting the monster as fast as possible even those use scripting. Um, but you know, we'll talk about it. We're just we're mostly just saying these are the predetermined uh, actions that we're trying to do to make sure that we finish the hunt as fast as possible. And most of the time they work and some of the time they don't. <laughs> because somebody just doesn't read the script. It's usually Juratotus. <laughs> it's usually the monsters, yeah. Um so the really neat thing now is that we've already done one rotation, one cycle of going through and gathering the items. Um, the neat thing is after the Rathian, uh, like or the yeah the Rathian mini cutscene, um, all of the items have essentially just spawned back up. So we're able to run back through and gather the rest of the items that we need. Um, but right now we're gonna be taking a different route. So uh, we'll be gathering the rest of the spirit, the sleep herbs, and then the nitro shrooms and other items for the bombs that we're gonna make in the future. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. It feels like we're wasting a lot of time, <laughs> but we're waiting anyways. Yeah. And so it's a, it's a really big convenience thing because without this quest, you don't have enough materials to do this. It's, it's really hard. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's, it is, it is kind of like a blessing that there was this quest right here that slowed us down and gave us the time to do all this gathering. It's like 40% of the materials that we use all come out of one quest. We're usually usually only gathering like 2 to 5% per quest. Mm -hmm. There is going to be a portion of the run a little bit later as well. Uh, after <coughs> Zora 1, where we're going to be gathering um, the last bit of uh, materials that we need. Um, and that's going to be during an expedition uh, run. So we're the only time concern we have is um, doing some two checkpoints and then leaving the, the quest. Uh, we are coming up to the final checkpoint. Um, there's a couple uh, more things that we're grabbing here, mainly these nitro shrooms. Um, I get to mix those with the fire herbs that I gathered earlier and make explosives because explosives are good. They're fixed damage and we can use them to start scripts. Uh, you know, we'll, we use them for openers, right? Uh, and this is one of my favorite openers ever um, because it was found very, very <laughs> early. And it was really funny because anytime that anyone asked me, like, hey, how do you do the bear off opener? I was like, all right. So it's going to sound crazy, but there's a single rock in the desert that you're going to put your trap on top of. You find that rock and you put your trap there and you're good. And they're mm -hmm. like, what do you mean? There's one rock. Oh, I see it. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> Every time. Bagel's going to be coming up to that specific rock right now. And what he's going to do is uh, start setting up for the barrel fight. So first he puts on the pitfall right on that special rock. Hi, rock. Uh, and then the two bombs. Uh, the neat thing about this is that we do get a cutscene uh, before we start the uh, fight with the monster. Um, so the Baroth is just going to show up and it's going to get immediately pitfalled. Um, and that's when they, uh, when Bagel and Green can start doing their openers. So there goes Baroth and Bagel screen. Nice. And Green's about ready. <laughs> Dancing. Previously waiting for bear off. And there goes Green's bear off. And they're off. 
like we mentioned before, green is going to be using the SNS. One of the moves uh, that the SNS has is called the perfect uh, rush or PR, as we like to call it. Um, it is it does a lot of damage. It's pretty strong for the weapon. Nice, well done, Bagel. Um, but yeah, so you'll notice that some there are times where uh, green's character is glowing red. That's when you can uh, input another attack button uh, or attack, and you'll be able to do a little bit more power on that um, on that swing. And nice. Well done, you both of you. You guys didn't want to do Fatalis Percent tonight? Uh, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I, I got three. That run. How long is Fatalis Percent? Uh, I did it in nine hours, 15 minutes IGT. It was about 10 and a half real time. Okay, that's pretty short. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We could do that next week. No big deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just slot it in. <laughs> Uh, uh, I got I got uh, Thunderbug RNG. What about you, Green? Uh, I got three. Nice. I got three. Uh, so Green and Big are looking for Thunderbugs. Those are going to be the uh, components we need to make <clears throat> the Shock Trap. Um, they got really uh, lucky and got it there. Uh, I believe the other opportunity comes up during Juratotus. Juratotus. Thank you. Yeah. 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 This can give us another uh, three to six. It's very nice, uh, and getting three is at least a five-second time save, uh, and if we get six, it is a seven-second time save. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Green, can you explain uh, Jared Totus really quick for us? Monster bad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, this quest starts out uh, with some RNG. He has a few opening attacks he can do. All but one of them we can flash him out of to set up a consistent wall bang. but if he digs, we just kind of have to cope and deal with it. Uh, and then both mine and Bagel's script revolves around the fact that this monster drops a thorn pod very early on in the fight, which we'll be using to set up a KO on him. Nice. Uh, so Bagel got really good uh, AI there. He's able to flash in now wall bang it. Um, you're going to notice a lot of times that we're in a wall bang the monsters uh, at the beginning of the fight. That's just the way that the um, most of these openers start. And green also got really good AI. Nice. Um, so like Green mentioned before, uh, Jerotodus does drop these thorn pods. Um, it's a type of slinger ammo that, uh, when it's attached to a monster, it starts, uh, it does a lot more, or that's the damage that you're dealing to the monster. Um, which really helps out with the, uh, KOs that we need. Um, Jerotodus is also- Mainly oh, KO damage. KO damage, right. Uh, another thing that's uh, interesting to note is that Jerotodus doesn't drop uh, not one, not two, but three pods uh, before he's ready to cap. Um, for those of you that are trying to keep an eye out for those pods. You're fine. They tried to transition on me. <laughs> he was leaving. And you said no. He jumped. Oh. He jumped. Oh gosh, it's all over. Turn around. So, no. So now Bagel does have to do some ad living here and try to bring the monster back into the shock trap he's laid down. Um, the way that traps work is that you can only put down one trap at a time. Uh, so unfortunately, Bagel did have to destroy the trap he originally put down and then put a new one. No. Did the okay, good. It didn't oh, end. Nice. All right. So I did yeah. have to use my extra. Man, that's really unfortunate. I'd use my extra shock, so that we have one extra shock trap for the entire run, and I have used it uh, on Jurotodus because he just jumped out of the trap. Mm -hmm. And I accidentally picked that up. All right. Um. So yeah, fish bad. <laughs> yeah, fish bad. I might have to also. I don't think I. Uh, my... Oh no, we have uh, two extras now because we still grabbed the one on Palumu. Correct. Uh, well, I also just got three uh, more, so I'm actually golden. Oh, nice. nice. So I can fix this after Zora 1. All right, we're fine. Everything's fine. Nobody worry. <laughs> I just don't have an extra for Anjanath and Toby. Those are the only ones I don't have extras for. Okay. Um, yeah, sometimes bad things happen. Uh, that's one of them. Um, when Fish jumps like that, he's immune. Um to everything, and so that's why I don't really like my script. Uh, but the other SNS, or excuse me, the other Switch Axe script is um, dependent on an RNG blast proc. So I just stopped doing it. <laughs> that one <laughs> ends up being this one ends up being a little more consistent. It's just harder to finish out. Mm -hmm. um, but next is Toby Kadachi, which this is probably my favorite Switch Axe script. 
Um, and it's also a very cool SNS script. This is a really cool fight. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no, I should be. I think, I think I'm okay. okay. Yeah. Probably. We'll see here in a second. Fingers crossed. Yeah, we're fine. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, so, Green, can you explain uh, how SNS is unique in terms of using items? Uh, yeah. So, SNS is the only weapon in the game that can use every item uh, while the weapon is drawn. And that actually lets us do a cool little thing at the start of this cutscene. Uh, we can kind of cancel our character's shocked animation at seeing the monster by drawing our weapon with our shield and then. Uh, immediately using an item, which in this case is going to be a shock trap. So we'll start the fight with the monster CC'd. Uh, other weapons like Switch Axe, what Bagel's going to have to do, they have to place the trap before the cutscene. It's a very weird placement. Uh, SNS doesn't have to worry about that, thankfully. Because <laughs> SNS cheats. Smile. <laughs> it's okay, I got it. Nice. Okay. Um... So you'll notice that uh, Bagel and then uh, Green soon are going to be going for the tail of Tobi Kodachi. Uh, Tobi Kodachi has a really good hit um, hit zones uh, values on the tail um, that really work out in our favor. Um, one thing we are going to have to keep an eye out for is if Tobi Kodachi goes up on the tree. If it does, all Green and Bagel are going to have to do is just put on the Gilly Mantle, uh, mantle that we got um, that essentially just makes us a walking camouflage bush. Um, so Bagel has to do that now since Toby decided to just do that. Nice, got him back down. Ooh, synchronized trapping. I love to see it. Nice. Good job. That was close, Green. You're fine. <laughs> there was like half a second left on that. <laughs> You're good. Uh, but yeah, and then that's Toby, our little flying squirrel friend. <laughs> got it. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> uh, I had to use an extra flash. I really wanted that one. Yeah. So I wanted to ask cause earlier, right? Um, Bale, you you had to improv a little bit because your script uh, just didn't work out because you had to the, the catch thing happened. Um, mm -hmm. So. Like how how often does that sort of thing happen? Like PB attempts, like like in either of your PBs, do 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 every script go perfectly, or do do you actually like really need to have strong improv skills uh, on a consistent basis for getting these really good times? Uh, you need to know how to improv um, yeah. because the a half a second miss input can cost thirty seconds uh, if you don't know how to recover from it. And even even then, um, your recovery may still may still lose like 15, 20 seconds and you recovered perfectly. Um, Green and I have talked about this a lot too. what's better for the speed run uh, consistency or the ability to um, ad lib. And I, I mean, like, I don't know about you, Green. I think I have decided on both. Right. Like you kind of need you kind of need both to know how to recuperate from these. Um, yeah. And a, a lot of it comes in practice. But. Hey, Green, I don't know if you had anything that you wanted to add to that. Uh, yeah, it's definitely one of those things of, like, it depends on the fight and the specific mistake. Like, some mistakes are very easy to recover from. You're going to lose, like, two seconds to it. Others, you're going to have to spend, like, 20 seconds just <clears throat> getting back to some CC you can use to restart your script. And then, like, if you're on a gauge weapon like Switch Axe, you may have lost your gauge by the time you get there. Is it is it pretty common for PBs to, to have messed up scripts from time to time? Like, yes. does your world record run, for example, have any like scripts that failed for whatever reason? Uh, my record run was like the best I have ever played, but every record run before that, yeah, I had like a gotcha. few noticeable mistakes. Gotcha, gotcha. Might have started that too early. <sighs> Ooh. We're fine, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. There's still the cast on a go away. There you go. We're less fine. We're less fine. <laughs> yeah, so this is one of the things that we were talking about. I messed up. And since this is a gauged weapon, I now have to get this back. Yeah. 
All right, we're good. You. <laughs> Uh, yeah, my gauge ran out the second after I started that ZSD. <laughs> uh, so that was very, very close. Wait, why do I have gauge? Clagger, please. Okay, that's not a clagger. I have to flash it. That's unfortunate. Uh, I might be able to get an extra flash here, though. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. Yeah, I had to use an extra flash there just because so uh, th that's another like you know, thing that ends up happening, right? When you lose the script and you start ad uh, ad libbing, you do have to understand you like your damage has now changed, right? So we can't do the same thing so to play a little bit safer. That's why I went mm -hmm. to that extra um, uh, ZSD, but he was also limping and I was just really hoping I'd get a clagger, but I also didn't want to accidentally uh, slay him because then that's a 40 second time loss. So, <laughs> um, you know, just trying to play a little bit safe. Uh, Oh my goodness. Zora we're, coming up to the, we're coming up to the first break. All right. Uh, so traditionally, um, Monster Hunter World has been broken up into three categories, uh, two partial any percents and then the full any percent, right? So you have Zora 1%, um, Zora 2%, and then Xeno percent. Uh, that's why we kind of named them after the monsters. I know everyone's been asking, like, what is Xeno percent? Like, what does that actually mean? And that's why we named it like that, because before Iceborne and before Devender Weapons, um, Xeno percent used to be a five to six hour long category. Because it was just an RNG <laughs> fest, it, and it's it's very very unfortunate. Um, so we broke them up into partial any percent categories, so people could still speed run them and still enjoy them. Um, and so we are. This is the first you know partial any percent category, and where we're going to take our first break. Um, it's like we were saying earlier. We will both stop. You know, we'll both pause at this spot, uh, spot and then afterwards we'll we'll pick up. So it's a it's kind of like a a best of three. So uh, we'll see. You know who gets. The Zora one point green because he's absolutely ahead of me right <laughs> now. Yeah, he's sailing. Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. All right, I was gonna say, uh, so green, do you want to talk about what's going on here during Zora one and what's so special about it? Uh, yeah, so to start out, we shot that binder at him. Um, oh gosh, you shot the binder already? Yeah. All right, he, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who will win. <laughs> uh, it, he does have to get hit by a binder for the quest to progress. Um, for whatever reason, there's like some invisible line that as long as he hasn't passed it yet, the binder lasts significantly less time. So we just shoot it right at the beginning uh, to make it as fast as possible. Now we, uh, we kill these birds just to get them out of the way so they don't mess with us later. And uh, we start setting up this cannon so we can cancel uh, his first animation coming up. Uh, there are three animations we're going to be canceling in total. Uh, two with cannons, one with a ballista at the end. And uh, now we're just waiting. So uh, <laughs> small tech, open the world map, fill in the unexplored areas. So I, we don't have to 1. wait for that to fill in when we go later. <laughs> 1.5 <laughs> seconds. The time saves, they're real. Yup. Okay, but there was a time where Green was making a spreadsheet of 1.5 second time saves, and I think it ended up saving like 15 seconds at some point. Uh, it was 35. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, so now Green's waiting for the uh, first animation here. Yep, so he takes this first big step, he's going to turn, and then he's going to take a second big step, and as he lands from that second big step is when I'm going to fire. Big step B. We like big step easier. Yeah, the uh, visual that? cues for Zora, the first <laughs> one is the hardest one to see. Uh, so it's like you kind of got to feel it out. The second one's very easy <laughs> to see. And the third one's like very easy to mess up. <laughs> <laughs> the third one, before we figured out how it worked, uh, we kept losing 20 seconds because we were accidentally hitting like a few frame window. <laughs> It was. That, Did we um, figure out how it worked? The animations. Yeah. We're... 
Of course, our you fingers. You want to talk about? You, got, you, you want to talk about both of us losing 26 seconds last week to Zora One? Yeah, we shot the second cannon too early. <laughs> Is that what it was? Okay, yeah, yeah. actually, I, I I vaguely remember that. Yeah, okay. All right, all right. Every time we say we understand Zora One, something else happens. <laughs> we're like, wait a minute. <laughs> go back. Go back to the whiteboard. Recheck everything. Is <laughs> it uh, uh, Zora? Zora one uh, time loss theory <laughs> number four hundred and thirty three. Exactly. <laughs> we, we go back and forth with this so many times. Uh, so the last animation we have to cancel is he does have to rock forward <clears throat> here, uh, and we want to get the flinch after the rock forward starts. There you go. Nice. Uh, I did a scary pre fire, but I did see <laughs> him rock forward before he flinched, so we are good. And then Bagel's getting ready Brady. to see this next cue here, the visual cue. There. Uh, so you notice that Zora just kind of stops, his beard wiggles a bit, uh, and then that's when we decided to shoot the uh, cannonballs again. Man, those birds have an agenda. They don't like me. <laughs> they do not like me. I get hit uh, all the time. So the birds can uh, hit you, which will cause you to reel back and kind of fall over, uh, which we don't want because then it doesn't get us ready for the next um cue that we need uh but now we get to do some item management here um you know checking that we have all our resources see if we're missing anything cry a little bit I'm if we are things. <laughs> i'm missing a lot no i'm, I'm actually i'm not saying anything actually anymore because we got those uh thunder bugs mm -hmm. yay rng yeah and crafting yeah, so uh, we it, do take advantage of this because we do we get to do some crafting here. We get to kind of just redo our our. Um... Oh, I can make this shock trap now! Oh my gosh, brilliant! <laughs> Does that mess up anything? That's only one extra. Yeah. No, it doesn't. We're good. I think brilliant. in your case, you're fine. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Literally never punished. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do get to take this time to like set up our inventory and and you know do you know, set ourselves up for the next part of the run um and it's just some creative uh item management menu management green can probably say more intelligent things about it than i can <laughs> uh yeah so the most important thing we're doing is um setting up our box so that this pitfall trap is one slot away uh from the first uh, location and our trap tools are in the first location because trap tools are what we're going to be restocking the most often and we'll need to pull this pitfall trap out at a later point uh and the other thing we did is in our equipment box here we moved our two weapons to the front so when we upgrade them later it's just a little less menu to get to them speed uh so we uh, already heard yeah oh what was gonna say uh so we've already heard the uh the voice line to let us know that zora Magros has broken to the first barrier um whoa good for him we're proud <laughs> uh so now we're going to continue to the next part of this um for those of you that tried to damage zora during this hey you didn't have to do that because it actually slowed down the quest by a lot of time uh the npcs are going to tell you over and over again hey that's a magma core destroy that that's not good for zora um it actually causes a stagger animation for zora uh, which causes him to slow down because uh, there's no way of just stopping this massive monster just barreling down this uh, crevice here. Um, so we, what do we do when we have nothing else to do? We dance. <laughs> is this the right one? Yeah, it is. All right, yeah, there it is. <laughs> I was hoping to see Popstar dance. This one's funnier. True. The pop tart, uh, pop, pop tart, <laughs> pop tart, pop star yeah. dance is uh, is my favorite. Yeah, so we just once again just take advantage of this time. Uh, you know, we r rarely do you get downtime in this game. This is this is the only downtime because now for the rest of it we are we're gonna be gas. Um, <laughs> so it, it's really nice because we can take this time to like you know get up, use the bathroom, um, you know like check messages, maybe take a selfie with chat. Uh, bigger taxes. taxes. Yep. Yeah. It's tax season. Yep. Get a diploma. Uh, yeah. We're, oh, we could we could have been doing our PMP course this entire time during Zora One. Oh, it's six and a half minutes. It's six and a half minutes of sitting here doing absolutely nothing. Just so. enough for one video. <laughs> Just enough. 
Uh, if you so right now is a really good time for anyone in chat. If you have questions, now's a great time to ask them because we because Green and I can actually look. Um, so, you know, if you have questions, go ahead and ask them. And if you don't have a question, tell me what your favorite monster is. That's what I want to hear. What monster do you want to see in Monster in the Wilds? There we go. Valstrax. Valstrax. <laughs> Why? Or no, hold on. Valstrax is fine. Crimson Glow is. Yeah, the Crimson problem. Glow is no. <laughs> Crimson Glow is a creature. <laughs> Overwhelming. But yeah, so this is um, definitely just a point to sit. All right. Mm -hmm. Kezu. Hold on. That's the wrong <laughs> pick. Giganox. Thank you, Raigeki. Giganox Ooh. is the correct answer. I think Nargokuga. That's a good one. Selfish Selfish is a good one. Yep. Rayquaza. Ray I saw that. Uh. <laughs> Crossover? Huh? Hmm? Crossover? Yeah, I saw Toby. <laughs> I saw Yan. I'm sorry, and I saw you. mean vote for not seeing Odo? We I love Odo. Odo's best boy. Yeah, Odo is actually a great, great monster. I saw some He's one of the most RNG there. heavy fights in the speed run, but I still love him. <laughs> still fun. <laughs> The problem about Odegaren is that we have no script against him, but he's just a really fun fight, so we <laughs> never complain about it. AT <laughs> AT Volcana. <laughs> Thank you, Minty. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> what if we made him more tempered? <laughs> Zamtrios is a good pick. Mm hmm. Ooh, a Cantor. Like that one. Uh, Bruzan, I'm going to ignore that Basil Geese. <laughs> 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 I don't like Basil at all. What about Steve? Steve! Yeah, Steve would be great. I like Steve. I've always liked Steve. A sick uh, Dissio uh, pick. Shout hmm. out to Frontier. But yeah, so uh, this is this is a great time to sit here and do absolutely nothing. <laughs> um, Stretch your legs. Yeah. Super straightforward. What about uh, everybody's favorite weapon now that we've gone over monsters? Mm. Favorite weapon? You have 16 to choose from. <laughs> Wait, hold on. All 16 are switch axe. Oh, hold on. <laughs> and even then, you're still what adding two more. <laughs> True 16th. Tonfa and Magnet Spike. I forgot Magnet Spike existed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's okay, Grin. I already saw I already saw Luna say it earlier. Uh, Madden spike. That's the only reason why it was in my brain. Uh, <laughs> and you see all my hammerheads in the chat. Let's go. Yeah, uh, I was gonna say. Hammer. Uh, I started out with hammer and base world, uh, and then quickly switched to charge blade, and then charge blade, charge blade. Sw quickly switched back to hammer, uh, and then Iceborne came out. Uh, came out, and I was like, oh, switch axe is good now. <laughs> Dude, I, I've never played switch axe, but it looks so wild in the speed run. Oh it looks yeah, so it cool. is. It is nutty. Uh, yeah, it, what's really funny is is because like all, a lot of times like we'll be doing runs and they'll see the, and people will see the uh, switch X scripts and they'll go, oh man, like I should do this like with switch X. I'm like, you will cart. <laughs> <laughs> don't play switch X this way. What we're doing, don't do it. This is not how you play switch X casually. Instead, never ZSD. ZSD is a trap. <laughs> Until you have yeah. temporal, ZSD is a trap. That's how they get you. <laughs> yeah. They're like, oh, look at this really cool attack that you can't move during, and you will just get hit during. Like, you get earplugs for sure, that's cool. Just but you carded. can be cart. Yeah, you can be carted by it. Good luck, have fun. Uh, so Green's coming up to the end of the Zora one second here. Gosh, so far ahead of me. Uh, so we're going to come up to uh, the next big uh, bad monster we're going to have to face later. Uh, spoilers, it's Nerdy Jante. Uh, but yeah, Green, do you want to explain a little bit what we're going to be doing here in this next slow part? Uh, I'm going to let Bagel do it because this is his oh, proudest this. contribution. Oh, you know what? That's this, is, this is literally my proudest contribution. Okay. Uh, so up next is um, my my personal favorite strategy. This is Nergigante Quick Kill. Um, so Green's probably already falling off of Zora, uh, right? Yeah, he's already uh, putting down bombs. Bomb 
Oh, he's already putting on bombs. All right, so I'll, then I'll explain it on my side. Uh, so we gilly up here to make sure that Nergigante doesn't see us when we uh, when he finally spawns in. Um, but we're going to stand on uh, Zora's neck here, and when he gets bindered by the PCs, uh, we're going to fall off and kind of go out of bounds, right? We fall off of him, and so it's going to reset our position on his back. That just helps us find the spot to actually put down these barrel bombs. You don't have to do this part as long as you can find this rock. It's just a little hard because Zora's moving so much. So we're going to put down uh, two large barrel bombs here um, and hover over our small barrel bombs. Um, what's going to happen is, is that Nergi is going to come in. We're going to dodge his roar, place down two bombs and pull out the weapon. This was my first contribution to this speed run five years ago. We could do this in the uh, base game and it was awesome. And uh, it ended up saving most people like 30, 40 seconds uh, because then you didn't have to fight this guy. But yeah, that's uh, that's where you gonna take quick kill. Uh, hmm. I messed it up. I uh, didn't buy small bombs in a run recently and lost like 20 seconds to this still, and I know how to fight Nergigante. <laughs> yep, so that's going to be our first uh, our first pause, our first break. Um, cool. Green, congrats. You get your first point on Zora 1. 1 0 for Green. Yay. I'm, coming, I'm coming back <laughs> for the colossal task split, though. Awesome, cool. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, because this isn't a marathon like AGDQ was last week, uh, we're going to take breaks to give everyone a chance to stretch, get some water, do what you got to do. Uh, we're going to take one break right now. We'll be back in just a little bit. And while we take this break, if you don't know what to do with yourself in the meantime, uh, please take the opportunity to go ahead and drop follows to Greenspeed, Jal Bagel, and Dita Johnny. Um, Twitch handles are all shown on the stream. Uh, if, you're, if you are watching live on Twitch, you can actually just hover over Green and Jal Bagel's name on the Twitch uh, title and just click the little heart and you'll follow instantly. So please, please follow them for putting on this great showcase. And uh, we're going to take a little break. We'll be back in just a couple minutes. So uh, see you soon. Hello and welcome back, everybody, to the GDQ Hotfix. Uh, this is your host, Etchy. We are in the middle of a Monster Hunter World Xeno% race, which is effectively base game, any percent race. Uh, they're going to go beat the monster known as Xeno Jiva. Uh, they're in the middle of it right now. They just finished the first third of it. Uh, currently, the record is 1-0 for green speed, so this is going to be Jal Bagel's chance to come back here. Uh, before we get into the run, I want to make a couple quick announcements. Um, one, GDQ's next All Women and Femme speedrunning event, Frost Fatales, is coming up March 3rd through the 10th. So if you enjoyed the AGDQ week-long schedule of uh, marathon run stuff, uh, this is another time where you'll be able to do that and observe it and watch it here on the GDQ Twitch channel. Uh, again, March 3rd through the 10th. Schedule's out now. You can use exclamation point FF in Twitch chat to learn more. Uh, if you want to be a remote volunteer for that, submissions are open January 23rd through the 28th. And uh, if you haven't missed out on any of their hot fix shows, be sure to check out the VODs on youtube.com slash gamesunquick. And if you are watching on YouTube, be sure to press the like button on this video and subscribe to the channel. Also go to twitch.tv slash gamesunquick to watch our shows live. And uh, without further ado, uh, I guess uh, we'll have DJ Johnny count us back into it. Yep. yep. I'll count uh, both runners down. Uh, Bagel, are you ready? Yes. <laughs> Green, are you ready? Yes. All right. Uh, so on go, three, two, one, go. I forgot what I was doing. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> 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 Greece is the lead. <laughs> All right. To be fair, doing that, breaking muscle memory and trying to figure out how to do it again, really difficult. No, that's fair. So this is probably the hardest, most just skill intensive portion of the speed run. You would think the end of the game would be. No, this is harder. Um, mistakes here equate to much larger time losses than they do at the with the elder dragons at the end of the game um and it is you know still we're still managing resources we're still managing um like our crafting and and our route and everything like that it's there's there's plenty of things that go wrong here um but it is just eight hunts straight in a row it's awesome it's actually a really fun segment i think it's eight six Se no seven six Lumu, Bon, the four Apexes, and Zora. Yeah, so seven. Okay, yeah, so seven. Yeah, yeah, that's close. Yeah. Um, Run there. You will notice, too, our routes are going to converge. Um, it's really only for Zora, the Zora 1 section, that Green and I use different strategies. Now we're going to be doing pretty much the same thing. Um, there's some differences in movement. There's some differences in decision making. Uh, I generally play things a lot safer. Green's a gamer. And... Um, 
we're going to uh, I mean it, it's gonna look pretty similar um green do you have anything to add now uh no I think you got it all all right um the next uh section is kind of uh, we're, we're just we're spotting uh, a new locale it's the coral highlands uh, aesthetically my favorite mechanically my least favorite <laughs> <laughs> um somehow I like the uh, rotten veil vale more I think it's because hmm. it's flatter Mm. easier to get around that's fair uh, but we have to uh, do another one of these uh, assigned expeditions um, where we go out, spot a monster unlock a camp and then leave uh, and so we just try to do this as fast as possible um, Green, how many flashes did you get? in oh, Thunderbugs? Uh, yeah, excuse me, yeah, Thunderbugs, <laughs> excuse me in, in um, Zora 1 I got all 6, so I get to skip okay. everything <laughs> <laughs> yep, I got all six too, so I get to skip everything. Uh, nice. uh I had to use an extra one though. I'm just gonna grab the extra on um Lumu. That one's free. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I still grab that one, so I guess yeah, I have two extras in the route now. Mm hmm Um <laughs> unless you skip Rathalos. Uh the six assumes you skip Rathalos. The six yes. it's you skip two on Zitzi, one on Rathalos, and two on Lumu. Right? I only skipped two. I skipped all three on Zitzi. Oh wait, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I understand what you're saying. Don't worry about me. We we came up with this days ago, by the way. <laughs> I got it. Let's go. Nice. Gamer? Gamer moment right there. It's like a half a second input. <laughs> half a second, but if you do it, it looks cool. It does look really cool. Um. So yeah, we uh normally we'd grab uh, two thunderbugs right there, but since we got the RNG uh from Baroth and Juratotus, we can skip them. Just come straight up here. Neat little time save, um, but even even then, it's only five seconds, and plus or minus five seconds is nothing in this game, uh, which is which is really nice, right? Um, mm -hmm. You know, a slight mistake or just a really good blast proc can actually make her make up or or lose that same amount of time. Um, you know, and and you'll see we, we might tug a war here. Um, you know, if if one of us gets a cleaner fight than the other, yeah, because I believe uh, or green uh, will just take off, right? Because he he works really well under pressure. Mm -hmm. And then Bagel, you're going to be switching over to SNS as well, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah right here before we go on the Lumu quest, um, I switch over. And um, I had everything crafted, right? I don't have to do anything. Should be good. Sorry, I'm like, because I'm, I had to deviate <laughs> from the route, and that doesn't often happen. I'm second guessing myself, but I think I'm good. And if I'm yeah. not, then, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out later. And then we ball. Then um, we but ball. This, this is going to be our first. Um, first time actually upgrading our weapons so like we mentioned before the defender weapons uh are the go-to weapon for speedrunners as well as uh trying to burn through the game as quickly as possible <clears throat> um so now we're going to make defender weapon two um with the <clears throat> we're also going to be crafting the um uh bone chest uh that's going to give us a little bit more uh raw damage um which we always love to see Yeah, the um, upgrade materials for the defender weapons come from the assigned missions. Uh, there's only four materials um, throughout the entire run. So, and they're always guaranteed, right? Um, it's whether or not we get more of them that is RNG. Uh, mm. And realistically, uh, we're going to get one more Anjanat scale. Uh, and we usually do not get the second commendation. It's a 1% chance. Mm. Um, a lot of the time in this section of the game too, we're just gonna let the scripts kind of speak for themselves um, because they're a little complex to uh, to talk about, and it's just cooler to look at. And plus, we kind of need quiet time during the uh, during the hunt just to make sure that we get it cleanly. Mm. Can you people move? No. Dog <laughs> just stood right in my way. Um, and we right. can try to explain them afterwards, too. Mm -hmm.
Well done. Nice. Cool. How's yours go green? Uh, clean. I grabbed the backup flashes because I was a coward, but... <laughs> oh. Still fine, Didn't though. Didn't believe. He did clagger the wrong way at the start, so I lost some time. I had to clutch on, but... Gotcha. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, mine was perfect. <laughs> 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 I was like, I think I missed one hit during the uh, the pitfall, and that was it. Yeah. It was like, it was it was perfect. Extra flashes? Oh, yes. I got nice. two. Two. I got none. Such. Well, um, we don't need the extra flashes from this quest and a later quest, but they do make this a lot more comfortable. Uh, mm. But yeah, the biggest uh, the biggest difficulty with that quest is actually the opener. Uh, cleanly getting those claw uppercuts because a lot of his uh, body parts are intersecting just is really, really difficult. Um, mm. It's very, very easy to mess up, but you know, with enough practice and paying attention, you can do it very consistently. Mm -hmm. uh, so Radabon, Johnny, can you tell us a little bit about Radabon? Uh, yeah, so this is another uh, assigned expedition quest that we're doing. So our two goals are siding and um, fighting the Radabon here uh, and then siding the great Gyros that we have uh, up ahead. So the beginning portions of this fight, uh, as you see Green and Regal both doing now, is flashing um, Radabon. Causes them to move back a little bit and then makes it a little bit easier for this wall bring to happen. Um, and then after that, they'll go ahead and start setting up, uh, doing a uh, clutch claw and then a tenderize on the monster so its head is weakened uh, and then start doing their uh, movement here. Um, and we'll just watch Green and Bagel do this for a bit. Nice. One thing to watch out here too is the uh, Vigorosa fly around. Um, those pesky little bugs can get in the way. Uh, they do have a paralysis ailment on them. So if uh, either Green or Beagle gets stung, uh, they are t paralyzed and are unable to move and causes, uh, causes us to slow down a bit. I missed a trank. Uh-oh. You're just gonna go for the sleigh then? Yeah. He is, yeah. Tragic. Although, this rap does have extra tranks. I was grabbing extra tranks. I should've just... Done it, yeah. yeah. It's okay. Yeah. The the trank routing is actually like one of the harder ones to make up for when you mess it up because we've been doing it very bare bones recently. Mm -hmm. Um I don't have don't Super. have a thunderbug right now. Hmm. Um I forgot to restock thunderbugs. So I'm gonna have to do some goofy menuing here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I forgot to take the six Thunderbugs on From Zora the, 1. Yeah. It's okay. I can just take them here and then <laughs> craft and then uh, take the trap tool back. It's going to lose like 10 seconds, but I can do it really quick. Mm -hmm. um, so a little bit of ad lib here. I messed up. Uh, this was this is a result of um, using that extra trap. Where am I going? On uh, Juratotus. Um, but it's okay. Uh, it, it, it is very difficult to recover. Uh, from uh, changes in your item routing, and it doesn't happen often. And of course, it's happened my last two runs today and yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Traps generally aren't the things that you have to uh, fix your route for, but here we are. So, time for everything. Uh, and, oh my gosh. Uh, so, Green, do you want to explain a little bit of how Legiana works for this hunt? Uh, yeah, so this is one of the few hunts that doesn't actually have a cutscene associated with it. Um, the monster is just on the map, so we are actually on a cycle to get to uh, the spot we need to be. Uh, the nice thing about that is it means we can eat at the canteen for an attack boost, because it doesn't lose us any time. Uh, and we can pull these flashes and poison knives out of the box. Uh, flashes are just nice because we don't have to use our own for this hunt. And uh, these poison knives, uh, we can just shoot one at her when she's uh, landing at the start of the fight. 
She'll get poisoned. I think it's about like 5% of her health that we just deal for free. Yeah, it's big. She's very simple to poison, which is really nice. And it's just super easy to set up. Mm -hmm. um, I'm bad at routing. I'm just going to grab this one. Yeah, so both are green and big ult. Nice. That was in sync. That was pretty cool to watch. Uh, <laughs> so they're both going to be running to the point that Legiana is going to be coming down because Legiana was all the way at the top of the map and is going to be flying down to this next area, area six. Um, <clears throat> And so uh, green and big are going to be setting up their bombs and then uh, set up the opener, which is while being into Legiana um, where the bombs are at. And then uh, continue on with the script, the script. And we can watch it go down <coughs> a little bit. I got here very early. Yeah, it's, I... it's like, where, where are they? <laughs> So there's the poison knife going into Legianus, and now that poison starts happening. And there's a wall bang. That's unfortunate. In there. <laughs> yeah, mine was a little awkward, but we are good. I missed my mount, but thankfully it flew instantly. I got um it flew instantly during one of my finishers, so I got an aerial topple and then threw because its head flail pushed me out of the way of the finisher. Mm. Nice. So that felt good. <laughs> <laughs> Completely whiffed that. It's alright though. You both 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 recovered really well. Yeah. Uh so coming up is Odo. <laughs> uh, so flashes? We... Green, Green, did you get any flashes? Uh, oh, no. Mm. Oh, sad. You want some of mine? I got four. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd love some. Thanks. Yeah, just <laughs> transfer it over. Right. Yeah, yeah, let's uh, let's meet up in a in, in a lobby really quick. I can give you some. Right, yeah. There yeah, we just restart the game and Steam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so actually we could talk about that a little bit too because both you, uh, Green and Biggle, you guys do the run offline, correct? Yep. Yeah, it cuts out a uh, an entire menu every time we launch a a, a, a new quest. Yep. And um, stops and... you from having. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, you say it. I insist. Uh, <laughs> stops you from having to set up a private lobby because we realized uh, if you had a friend join your lobby, you could get access to uh, food that you shouldn't have access to. Yeah, pretty much the only rules for this. It's like if you're doing multiplayer, everyone has to start from a new file. Um, and, you know, we share all perspectives. Um, mm -hmm. And plus multiplayer runs are just kind of like a meme. Uh, but hey, Oda Garen, <laughs> uh, this fight is my favorite only because it's just a lot of fun to do. We don't have a script. We do have a strategy. We're just going to be reacting to everything that he does and trying to take advantage uh, of his AI and do PR ones to do as much damage as we can. Um, it's, it's a very fun fight. It's a really cool one to watch. So uh, enjoy. Both Green and I are very good at this. I'm not biased. I, uh, uh Green's to having my torch pods. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, redact that and say I'm really good at this. So enjoy okay. watching me. Green's, Green's adjusting. It should be fine. Yeah. Beautiful Clagger.
Remember when I said we were using sword and shield? I meant to say we were using shotgun. Beautiful. Nice. Nice. Okay. <laughs> a little, a little uh, shaky there, but you did it. <laughs> this is um, why we pick up our rocks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Without our openers, it's really hard to uh, to really set up on this. The best. I mean, uh, I don't. I don't know how you did it. The best that I could come up with thinking about it was uh, triple hit and then try to PR. Uh, I flashed tenderized and wallbang with the pierce. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's a good. That's a good option. Mm -hmm. I probably would not have done that. <laughs> uh, so um, you, yeah, is, Green, can you? Can, yeah, you guys, you guys can talk about this. I'm gonna focus yeah, on you're, it. You're actually. gonna focus. Yeah. So Green's coming up, or they're both coming up to what's uh, now considered expeditionless. Uh, Green, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Uh, yeah. So, uh, the cutscene we're trying to get to spawns in a Rathalos and then put you into some dialogue, and they set it up so that by the time you finish your dialogue, the Rathalos is flying away, so you can't just fight him. Um, we found recently that if you position a pitfall trap correctly, it'll stop the Rathalos from moving just long enough for you to go up, intercept him, and flash him out of the air so we can actually fight him in the expedition instead of having to go back to town and posting his quest. And how much time did that save? Uh... A minute or 40 seconds if you get a bad track pattern, because it does mean we don't unlock a camp that makes one of the track patterns faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Biggles already set down the trap. He has to run now rush over to Rathalos. You'll notice on the right side of his screen, it says Rathalos has fallen to a pitfall. Now uh, Biggles is going to have to run up. And as soon as he gets to the top of here, he's going to have to flash uh, Rathalos to make sure he stays back down. Nice. And then what he's going to do next is he's going to go for the wall bang. And then we have a neat little environmental trap up here, um, which is a waterfall. Uh, right now it's um, built around a dam, but we're going to put some barrel bombs and then run away. Because uh, one thing that can happen is you can get stuck into the waterfall animation. Um, and you're not able to drop here quickly enough. And we want to try to get here as fast uh, as fast as we can, uh, so we can get, go ahead and get set up with our script. Now Green's going to go ahead and start setting up the wall bing as well. Nice. Then we're going to do a little bit of property damage here and run away. Nice. And Green's going to go ahead and start getting set up for his script as well.
Uh, another thing to note here is that we could have an invader, uh, just like we talked about before. Anjanath sure does just love showing up here. Um, if uh, So there is a chance for him to show up uh, and kind of disrupt kind of the bush that we have going on here. Uh, luckily, it looks like big ol's in the clear. Nice. Not even worried. <clears throat> Perfect. Yeah. Expedition Lotus. Feels Love really it. Good. Yeah. All right, there's a first pod for green. And green set too. Nice, well done. Congrats, you two. Uh, so now we're going to go into Diablos. Diablos is uh, really interesting. We do have to watch out for some AI here in the beginning um, that's going to set us up. Um, he could either do one of two things. He could do a running animation uh, towards us, which is actually good because uh, he'll get his um, horn stuck into a boulder that we have there and gives us an opener. Um, or he could just disregard that and dig a hole. Uh, Diablos' whole shtick is diggy diggy holes. Uh, so what Bagel and Green are going to pick up are called uh, easy screamer pods. Uh, what that essentially does is that once Diablos uh, digs underground, we go ahead and shoot that and it causes Diablos to kind of gets stuck in the sand when he's trying to come back up and it gives us a little bit uh or it gives us a uh, opener uh, for damage as well so bago's gonna start going into that diablos cuts in here we're gonna keep an eye out and nice so now diablos is gonna get stuck there and bago can start getting set up now uh, we're gonna be looking for some leg topples here um that's gonna be <clears throat> the one things that we're looking out for. Nice. And now we'll watch and see if Green gets lucky with the AI as well. Nice. Alright, so Green got lucky on the AI as well, so he's going to go ahead and start doing that. Uh, one thing that Bagel and Green are going to have to keep an eye out for, though, is uh, when they decide to place down the trap because uh, Diablos can break the shock trap that's placed down. Um, so we are going to have to keep an eye out on that and be a little bit careful when that happens. So as you can see, Green's... Uh, Green's Diablos decided to go underground, so he decided to use that Screamer Pod. And now Diablos is kind of stuck in his own little trap. I'm pushing my Diablos into a transition <laughs> zone. Oh. oh, no. Oh, it's running oh. out. Like, we're good, we're good, we're good. <laughs> we're good, we're good. You. It's back in the zone. <laughs> tail attack? That's not tail. No. Okay, I'd much rather lose time to this thing than it transition. Yeah. Oh, uh, this actually works. Perfect. Yeah, Green has had two uh, dig attempts. You had the one so far. Yeah. Ooh, there's my pod. Nice. Nice. <laughs> You're fine. Heart attack. And Gosh. there's green. Well done. <laughs> so it's always sketchy trying to trap uh, Diablos. We want to make sure that we're trapping him during an animation. Um, because if he digs when we place the trap, the trap is broken. Just gone. <laughs> it's great. Uh, when I first started spearing this game, I had an attempt where he did that not once, not twice, but three times, and I ran out of all my traps. And so I had to cap him, or I had to cap him with a pitfall. <laughs> it was uh, really funny. It was like one of like one of my earlier speedruns. Mm -hmm. It's a great clip. 
Um, so now we're going to go into Zora 2, which is the end of uh, the two out of three uh, checkpoints that we have. Um, it looks like Bagel's a little bit ahead of the lead right now. Just sad. Um, but now uh, with Zora 2, um, remember those Magma cores that we decided to ignore in the <coughs> first uh, attempt? Yeah, now we actually get to do damage to those. <laughs> um, so... Uh, I'll hand it off to Green or Bagel if you want to talk about what we're doing here in Zora uh, 2. Green. 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 <laughs> can, I t can I talk about it? Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, Zora 2 is... <laughs> I actually really like Zora 2. Because um, it's a cool like little cycle that we get to maintain on it. Um, but we're essentially trying to time rock drops and uh, damage on the Magma Core with uh, other animations that he's doing and other things that are happening during the hunt. Uh, before we go on that, we are going to take a moment here to shop, because who doesn't like some shopping? Uh, but we're going to buy a Power Charm. Um, that is a item that sits in our inventory that just gives us a flat bonus to damage. That's it. That's all it does. More damage. Feels good. Uh, there's no, like personal like character level ups that's the closest thing we get to like leveling up on a on a character level uh, everything else is just always our equipment uh, but immediately in here like johnny was saying is that we are going to damage the magma cores but we don't want to break them breaking them slows mag uh, zora madros down so we're only going to deal as much damage as we need to but you can see the stalag mites and the stalag tights that we're going to be dropping onto Zora Magdaros uh, while we go here. And like, it's super awesome how they do this. There's just bombs attached to that. They're yeah, just like, kinda... yeah, how do we drop this? Let's just <laughs> let's just strap some bombs to it. How they got this up there? No idea. Yeah. I would have loved to have seen the preparation for that. Um, so magma cores are, are interesting, too. It's one of Zora's ways to fight back. Um, they have two small patterns and one big. And um, we're going to have to adjust to how they explode. Um, so you'll see me do some weird things here. This is a big explosion, so we're just going to get away from it for right now. Um, and we know exactly how many PRs to do to the Magma Cores. So I want to get three, ma uh, three PRs here first. Uh, and ideally, I get them before the next explosion happens. I'll probably have to wait till after. Yeah. I am going to have to wait till after big one too quick bit um it's fine this entire quest is on a timer uh until the very end of it and what we're doing during this is going uh, during this first phase is going to speed up uh the second phase because uh, there's a really big health gate that we have to meet and so dealing damage to the uh magma cores is going to help with that um sns is the best weapon to do this with because of uh how this game works with heartbreak modifiers Every weapon's attack has an individual part break modifier, and for the for all of PR except for the finisher, um, you have a modifier of less than one. Was it 0. 0.8? Uh, 0. 0.3. 0. 0.3, oh, which yeah. is is great uh, because that means we are a lot less likely to break the magma core, so we can deal so much more damage to it. Because when it breaks, they are not damageable. Uh, so I'm going to be dropping these rocks first. Uh, I hit the one behind me, just taking advantage of some hitboxes there. Uh, fall down here, hit this. I'm going to let that finish because I always get hit by it. And we want to do five PRs to the second Magma Core now. Oh, I can actually get this in. Nice. So Claw Uppercut gives us Hyper Armor, uh, or super, super Armor. Um, so we take damage, but we don't get knockback. So we can actually use it just to like stay next to the core during those large explosions. So um, HP management is actually a huge part of this. Mm -hmm. And stamina. Uh, and what's really nice is that we do have the Defender gar uh, Armor, so uh, or Guardian Armor, I should say. Um, that gives us three levels of health boost and three levels of divine blessing. Uh, divine blessing says uh, periodically if we would be if we would take damage, we don't, or we take significantly less. It is a very nice skill to have in a game where we are throwing ourselves at monsters with reckless abandon. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of fun. So the next rock drop is tied to uh, an audio dialogue. Uh, we want that rock to hit after this dialogue. So the faster we hit that after the dialogue, the better. Um, if we hit before it, though, we lose a bunch of time. So that's just bad. 
So we aren't trying to go for perfect on that rock drop, but we want to be pretty close to that to that voice line. And Green's gonna do it like the frame before or something. Don't worry about me. He's yeah, flying. okay. <laughs> Um, I haven't you, thrown Tazora so far. We're good. Yeah, we're you good. guys are actually kind of like neck and neck here. It's really good to see. He's winning um, from, yeah. from purely from from <laughs> those pesky pesky uh, loading screens. <laughs> He's catching up to me. Um, so they do have to be careful around here because the hitbox on this uh, stalag tight. Mites. Yes. Tight. tight, tight to the ceiling. Mites are on the ground. There you go. Thank you. Science. <laughs> You've learned something today from the geologist himself. I hope everyone was taking notes on that because this is a quiz later. Um, but yeah, so we have to be careful with the hitbox on this stalactite because if we, you know, decide to shoot our slinger burst a little bit too early or anything like that, it can cause it to drop um, sooner rather than later. Um, but luckily, both green and big old um, got that down to a T. So now they're going to start getting set up or uh, Nergi's arrival here. And we love giving Nergi gifts in the form of bombs. I That looked okay? We'll that see. Looked a little close. <laughs> uh, we I, I usually like to put it on the rock, the rock not yeah. between them. So we'll see what happens here. Yeah, because Nergi does land on here. If he lands on the rocks, they do explode. Oh, you're right, fine. Um, so uh, we are trying to break his horn here, though. Yeah. So with the rock explosion causes a knockback, we're going to get ready for a wall bang here. Well done. And then we're going to tenderize the head so we can weaken it. Um, then throw that slinger. And you should see a horn break here. Is that playing with my camera like that? There you go. Um, so yeah, that horn break is essential because... Nice! Uh, the swag uh, double horn break. <laughs> All right, go ahead. No, you're good. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we need that horn break because later on in the run, we're going to be looking for uh, Elder Dragon tracks, uh, including Nergis. Um, without that horn break, we lose. We actually have to go through uh, an expedition to gather more that actually loses us uh, quite a bit of time. Um, by the way, so I had a rock friend right here. Looks pretty. Yeah, neat. rock friend. Uh, Bigo, do you want to talk oh. about Rock Band really quick? Shout outs to GJG98, a hat in time speedrunner, for finding this casually. Uh, for some reason, uh, while Zora Medros is standing up, this rock does not break. Um, after extensive testing and a lot of. Uh, no, that probably doesn't work. This is still damaging him. I got fast stand. Hmm. Oh. Uh, we don't know why that happens. <laughs> he just stands up faster sometimes. Smile. One of the many questions we have about this run. I also got fast stand? Huh. Maybe it is the rock drop timing? <laughs> gonna have to no, it's, it's absolutely not that. Maybe it is. I don't know. Um, we're back to the first core, though. Uh, we want to do four PRs, so we'll do two and two between explosions. Ooh, I got a good pattern. Nice. Uh, green also got a good pattern. It's always really nice when you don't have to stop your PR. Feels good. Shout out to one of our hits doing 69 damage too. It's pretty cool. Nice. And then now we're going to the last uh, <laughs> magma core. And so this one's cool. So we do, we can technically break this one, but we want to do it uh, after uh, a certain point. Um, if you break it too soon, you do kind of mess up Zora's uh, AI going into the end here and we're trying to uh, make sure that we phase out of bounds instead of uh, are brought via the wing drake to phase two um, and what I mean by that is is that this cavern that we're in right now is like a hole in, in Zora's back it, and he's going to stand up and this is going to close and if we end up out of bounds before that wing drake transition we actually end up on the left side of the barrier instead of the right uh, which is very important for us because it's closer to where we want to be. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to push myself up into the corner here, still doing PRs because it's still damage. Uh, I'm going to stop doing them now because I actually have to watch out for this last core explosion. I think it's going to happen while I'm phasing out. There we go. Oh, All yeah. right. 
Yeah, so now as you can see, Bagel's on the left side of the barrier, where usually you're on that right side. Um, so it takes a little bit longer to get here. And so now we're in phase two. We just have a little bit more damage to do, but we're going to do, uh, we're going to start shooting these cannons. Uh, so the way that this quest ends is we need Zora to get to the barrier so that the barrier's defense health shows. Um, Zora can be flinched out of this, but if we shoot the cannon early enough, he doesn't flinch out of these first couple of steps, which is nice. So we can shoot those uh, cannons and he will progress normally. Um, when that happens, the NPCs start loading up the other cannons and we load up the third one. And then we're just gonna come right back down here after we shoot our Dragonator to get the last couple of hits. Um, ideally, this is done in like three cannons. Uh, so we've already shot two. So let's see if we get it in one more. Um, normal is four. Uh, and if uh, we didn't get good damage on a Magma Core, uh, five, sometimes six, but with SNS, six shouldn't happen. Five is, is usually uh, what happens. Mm -hmm. Where's my Love. Dragonator? Uh, it's right there in the side of Zora Madros. All right, I got four cannon. Nice. Yep, four cannon. Uh, I shot the fifth just to make sure. Never hurts. And then now we wait, and you just wait for eight seconds here sometimes for no reason, and you just oh, I didn't lose time. Let's go. Hey. Yay! We got a good we got a good uh, camera Green. shot at the end too. Green had to do another cannon. Huh. I, I, I just shot it to make sure. Uh. Wait. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it nice. doesn't lose any time in theory. It doesn't lose any time to like shoot the extra cannon. Um, but we we try to avoid it just in case like a weird flinch happens and we don't know why the eight seconds at the end happens. Mm -hmm. uh, but oh, there we go. Zora two. Door Zora two. So we're one and one now. Yeah, yeah. you guys are tied. Huh. Tied. What was Can't your wait. Zora time? Uh, 953. 951. Yeah. I got a very <laughs> Man, long look at us. wait. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get a long one? I got a really short wait there. All right. Yeah. Cool. So I guess we're going to take another break right now. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, this is this is a good spot for the next breaks. Cool, and cool, the cool. next half, the, the last bit of this is about an hour and it is all high rank. Awesome. Very exciting. So, yeah, we're going to get into that high rank content very soon here. The score is tied up 1-1. One, one. Uh, so this last chunk uh, will be basically just an extra race then. And uh, we'll see who comes home with the victory. Will it be Jal Bagel? Will it be Green Speed? We'll find out. After this break, we'll be back in just a few minutes. Hello and welcome back everybody to the GDQ Hotfix. I am your host, Etchy. We are now in the last chunk of this Monster Hunter World Xeno% Percent race. Again, Xeno% Percent, just a base game speed run to beat Xenojiva, the boss of the game, and we'll see credits and yada yada yada. Uh, we're at a very tight race right now. It's currently 1-1. One, one. We've been breaking into chunks. 1-1 uh, one, one Jalbega, 1-1 one, one Green Speed, so they're dead even. This is the race to decide it all. I am so excited. Uh, before we get back into the run, just want to make a couple quick announcements. One is that your subs, your Prime Gaming subs, gift subs, and bits cheered on the GDQ Twitch channel help support games on Quick Hotfix. If you enjoy watching speedruns daily, consider subscribing to the channel. Also, Unapologetically Black and Fast will be back uh, live on January 17th and 18th. Come celebrate by watching a weekend full of speedruns of Black Joy. Use explanation point UBAF in Twitch chat for more info. And uh, let's go ahead and count back into the run. Uh, yeah, so uh, Bagel, are you ready? Yes. Green, are you ready? Yes. All right. This is all for the marbles here. Tide tide. So on go. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> gotta, gotta mash here. And yeah, make sure you hit circle too at the very end. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but we have uh, auto saved turned off. Uh, so we don't save. So it saves time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, cool. So we're heading into high rank. Green, do you like high rank? Uh, after this quest, yeah. <laughs> uh, That's fair. We are switching back to Switch Axe uh, for the next two fights. I'll be using it for one more. Uh, Green will be switching back to SNS after two. Um, but this is now high rank. Uh, we are in a very different kind of game now. Um, monsters have more health. They deal more damage. Um, we now 
can actually cart here. Um, Defender is uh, the Guardian armor is not end all be all, uh, so we do have to be careful about how we do these fights. Um, right, like we're wearing the bone chest, so we're already losing out on like, uh, you know, was it sixty defense right there? Um, you know, we get a lot from the thirty. We get a lot from the, the Guardian, the the Guardian armor. Um, mm -hmm. But this is high rank Pookie Pookie. Um, yeah, there's a there's a script here probably, mm -hmm. but it's switch axe, so we have to deal with RNG from blast uh, from blast proc. So um, ideally, we're gonna get four ZSDs in, and then we're gonna go for a trap, uh, and we can usually clagger lock him, and then take advantage of uh, stealth at the very end. Um, but while we're doing this, uh, we do have to start gathering tracks. Johnny, while we do this fight, can you talk about tracks? Uh, yeah, so one of the uh, new mechanics that, the, that Monster Hunter World introduced was track gathering. Um, essentially what it is is that you gather enough track points, uh, either footprints that the monsters left behind, um, or scratch marks or whatever have you. Um, you gather enough of those and you find out what the next big monster you have to fight. So during this time, um, there's some uh, pink, big pink monster uh, that we have to fight uh, later. Um, so right now, during this expedition hunt, um, while we're going after Pookie, um, we're also gathering tracks here. Um, spoilers, it's for Pink Rathian. Um, Whoa, spoilers. Whoa. Um, and she hasn't gotten that far yet. Oh, no. I'm sorry, Ashley. Hey. <laughs> 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 um, so yeah, so there's going to be a part of the run where we're gathering um, tracks here. We're going to also go on a track gathering quest um where we need to collect uh i believe it's it's not 30 is it no yeah 30 30 yeah i ain't got my numbers right this time nice um so we have to gather 30 tracks total um uh i believe uh big O's mentioned this earlier that the tracks are already predetermined um usually on the run there are rng um either one two or three um but for the sake of the race, uh, we had the runners have um, the consistent tracks. Yeah, we're using a practice tool to make sure we get the same RNG as each other, just so nobody wins this because we lost a minute and a half on tracks. Because <laughs> that can't happen. <laughs> oh, yeah, it can and will. Uh, but yeah, that was Pookie <clears throat> right there. Uh, did any of you get the sack, by the way? I got mine. Uh... Hey, I oh, got yeah, nice. multiple. All right, we're good. Cool. Uh, so like we mentioned earlier, the Pookie uh, sack that we need is actually for the Palico weapon because that does do poison damage. And Xeno Jiva is very weak against poison. Um, so luckily, they did get the HR uh, sack. Um, if one of them didn't get it, they would have to resort back to the low rank one uh, that they got. Um, but we don't have to worry about that. Um, so now we're going to go on the track gathering. Damn. I didn't get it. Uh, you didn't get it. Oh uh, man, neither of us are gamers. There's a there's a menu buffer that you can do right there. It's RNG. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're going to be using these expeditions to gather the remaining uh, of the tracks. You see this mining node that absolutely shouldn't be there. That's telling us that we are using um, the practice mod. Uh, so it does invalidate our runs. Um, and we are explicitly doing this for the purpose of the race. Uh, we want to explicitly say this, that this mod is not allowed for the leaderboard. So if you do decide that you want to come and learn this game, do not use it. Because, uh, you know, it, it will invalidate your run. Um, and if you do practice, if you do use the practice mod, uh, it is always healthy to check and make sure that it is disabled. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, tracks um, under normal conditions, uh, there are four monsters and three patterns for each monster. So 12 patterns in total that we have to memorize. And we just have to identify them the moment that we get into a quest. Fortunately for us, we know that uh, Pink Rathian is going to be pattern two. Kushal is going to be pattern two. Uh, Teosha is going to be pattern one. And Valhazox will be pattern three. So we just know that because of the seed that we're using. Air quotes seed. Um, yeah, we, we just know that. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to make sure I didn't miss no, out. <laughs> no, that's fine. Uh, so, yeah, so for this uh, instance, pattern two does have 100 and, uh, or 18 um, sets of tracks that you have to pick up. Um, you you just, only gather 17. It's faster. You on, yeah, you only gather 17 um, because you do only need to gather in total 300 or 30. I keep doing it by the point. You're fine. Yeah. 
Um, so in this next run, uh, they're actually going to be doing this really neat trick, which is going on a quest. Um, it's the Pookie Pookie Ambush quest that starts off here. Um, if you don't have to finish the quest, we could just return uh, okay. return from the quest and it'll still count towards our track total. Um, so now you're just going to see Bagel and uh, Green go through it again. Uh, but this time they're only going to be gathering uh, 12 more tracks here. 13, but yeah. 13. Um, I did see a question earlier. Uh, somebody asked, and I wanted to talk about it now. Um, somebody asked why switch back to switch axe. Um, and the simple answer is, yes, it is faster. The more complicated answer, I'm on five, um, is uh, it has to deal with how we can script the monster with this weapon. The script for the the script for these fights with these weapons are, in fact, faster. Um, I'm on seven. Yeah, seven before you make the turn. Eight, nine, yeah, 10, 11, 12, 13, yeah. So the, the script is faster, um, and it's a lot more consistent with uh, Switch Axe than it is with SNS. Um, not impossible, just faster. Mm -hmm. uh, so you may notice that our uh, target monster progress bar there wasn't filled up. We're actually going to get the last um, four points that we need from the next hunt that we do. Uh, Green, you want to talk about um Anjanath? uh yeah so this quest similar to the first Anjanath, uh on bagel side we're gonna be uh clagger locking with zsd uh unlike that quest though we don't have a boulder to get our lock back so we are gonna have to use an extra pitfall trap for that uh the interesting thing about this hunt is we're actually going to abuse stealth ai as long as Anjanath is stuck in his searching ai after every clagger he's gonna back up and try to roar as long as we flinch him again before he roars, he'll stay in stealth AI. So he can use that to basically guarantee he doesn't do any weird movement that'll make our ZSD finisher miss. Yeah, so um, the script is faster, forehead. It, explanation <laughs> will make a lot of sense here when you see actually just how well we can lock down this monster um, with this weapon. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I apologize when I when I say, well, the script's faster, and that's why it's faster. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, when it, you see it, it does make a lot more sense. Uh, I got a good spawn. For itself. I got nice. bad spawn. Let's go. Uh, yeah. So the good spawn is that Anjanath will be really close to us on our left. Uh, bad spawn is it's gonna make its way into um, this area, as you see on green screen. Um, so now he's gonna bait it over for the pit bull. They're gonna start setting up. Making sure all of that damage is going into the head. Oh my god, that's pretty so wild. <laughs> Eight vital lilies. Yeah. Uh, so unfortunately, Green did lose that uh, stealth AI, um, so now he has to uh, adapt to it uh, because Angela is not going to be moving around. Hey, can Those you pre-trank on the pitfall? Uh, <laughs> if you know your damage is good. Okay, my damage is good, but I accidentally just did that. <laughs> oh. Oh my god. No! Alright, oh. well that's unfortunate. Yeah, so I have to slay this thing. I accident- I made a uh, mistake, and we're gonna lose a bunch of time. Uh, with the Thunderbugs, do you not have an extra extra no. trap? No, uh, uh, trap tools. Uh... Well, that's really unfortunate. So we are going to get a 60 second end quest timer. So you'll see why we um, actually trap always. Uh, it's unfortunate. Man, he is pulling me very far away from 
everything. Can you stop, please? Oh my gosh, I have to... He's... I don't know where he's going. I have to go and get the... Well, if he stops here, I'll be fine. So anyways, welcome to Monster Hunter World. <laughs> Can we not be on this vine? Oh my gosh. And you may be wondering, why am I not just doing the thing that I did earlier to him? It doesn't work anymore. <laughs> All right. I'm finally done with this quest. <laughs> Uh, Ooh. yeah, that's right, because I didn't have... Remember, I already used my, my extra? Is that what it was? Because mm. it would have had it. I would have... Yeah, I didn't have an extra. How did that happen? Did I just not craft one at some point? I don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do, though? I'm going to go grab extra stuff. Yeah, no, it's it's a it's a really big time loss to not get this stuff. So now I have to wait another... So in addition to having to hunt that monster down to zero, I now have to wait an additional 40 seconds. So green's just going to do pinky and by the time <laughs> I get out of this quest. Joke's on him. I'm going to have backups. <laughs> Not one, but two extra backups. I have six tranks now. What are you going to do about that? <laughs> Using I, a... I can't compete with that. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Maybe that's uh, the... The game breaking strat we've been missing use trank bombs on the elder dragons. Yeah, <laughs> honestly. Let's go through them. But at this point, green is now probably a minute ahead, if I had to guess. Maybe more. Because you're doing pinky in right now, aren't you? Yeah, he's, a, yeah. he's already bringing I just it down. Flashed it. Oh, you aren't even talking about it? Uh. Focusing. Yeah, I was just saying. Okay, it should be easy from here. So now we're just. What was that angle? Uh, trying to hit as much damage into the head as we can on this pitfall trap. Trying to build up KO. I'm missing everything. Uh, I have to get a clagger here. I can sling a breath of bomb pot into the head before grabbing the clagger just for a little extra damage. Uh, try build up some KO here. There we go. Nice. Oh, I don't have a Thunderbug. I have no idea how that's even possible. So I have to cap with a Pitfall. I actually have no idea how that's possible. Hmm. Alright, well. You know what? Yeah, man, ad lib. We got it. this. This is easy. <laughs> the script's harder than ad libbing, anyways, so. Don't jump. All right, we're good. So normally we would place a uh, pitfall here uh, after this ZSD. I'm not going to do that. And instead, we're just going to pray. Oh my gosh. There's my clagger. Ow. 
Ow. So we already see first pod. I am going to wait till I see my second pod because then I know it's uh, cap ready. Just stay in the air one more time so we can do this. Wait a second. So now Big O can go ahead and start getting ready for the pull. Don't back up, don't back up. Alright, good. Nice. And no. All right. As far as ad lib <laughs> pinkians can go, that's pretty good. Well, that was really, really good. Uh, Pinkian can do this really fun thing. And when we say fun, we mean mean, which is it does runnies and it'll run back and forth, which has happened in runs before. Uh, and we hate to see it. Um, yeah, just out of out of thunderbugs. Did I use yeah. two traps? No, I only use one. I just don't think I had. Uh, yeah, I don't think I, I think I skip. Oh, because I already used one extra and not sell. We want to take all. Thank you for paying Maybe attention. Not <laughs> grab one on Palumu. Um, I didn't grab the one on uh, Rathalos. I should have grabbed that one, but I skipped it because I forgot that I'd already used my extra. Mm. So I only had one extra, which equated to zero. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think I don't know. I really don't. I mean, <laughs> it mathed out to where I didn't have enough. So. <laughs> <laughs> Math, Somehow math I did. Math. <laughs> oh well, uh, it happens. And and what's really funny is is that that's all because of Juratotus, man. <laughs> always blame the fish. It's always the fish's fault. Yeah, yeah. It, it always goes back to fish. Uh, so uh, now we're going to be doing uh, Elder Tracks here. Um, we're going to actually be doing them in a specific order uh, for speeds um, because of the way that we menu through the map. Um, so we're going to be doing Kushala first, then Tail, and then Val. Um, like we mentioned earlier, these are already predetermined um, tracks. Uh, I believe it's two one two. Uh, uh, two one three. Two one three. Um, so we're going to be doing those, uh, and then at the end of uh, vowels, we're actually going to be flying back over to uh, the elders' recess uh, to meet our good old friend Admiral, um, who will like to talk about Nergigante. Yeah, so when we get to uh, Elder Recess, uh, when Green gets to Elder's Recess, you should absolutely talk about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, this is great. We're staggered just enough that I can uh, help <laughs> explain Elder Dragons uh, before Green does them. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. This is all planned. Yeah. And then Green's going to throw to Zeno, and I'm going <laughs> to uh, have BTT Zeno. I'm going to have like the best Zeno time ever, and then end up winning. Yeah. This is all planned, guys. This is all scripted. Oh. Whatever gives us more Monster Hunter content, I'm here for. Let me say <laughs> that. Okay, so we're both going to triple cart to Zeno. <laughs> Got it. Triple yeah. cart from here on out. <laughs> uh, so now Green's going to start making his way over to the Robin Veil to get the last set of, uh, well, the second to last set of Elder Tracks, um, which are about Zok. What's also really fun about this section is that we can see invaders like Basil Geese and Devil Joe, and it's always really fun because we are never expecting it. Mm -hmm. Yep. And they're just there. And then they hijack your camera unless you look at the ground. Yep. And then uh, Basil, even if you're in stealth, can decide he <laughs> wants to body slam another monster that's next to you, uh, hit you with a giant AOA, and then roar seven times in a row. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thankfully, the run was already dead when that definitely didn't happen to me. But, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, but track gathering is, uh, probably one of like the bigger hurdles because you have to learn how to do this and learn how to identify them and then learn how to do it quickly. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it, it's, it's a big hurdle for new runners. Uh, fortunately we do have a video out that, uh, teaches people how to do this quickly. Um, so you can find that. And the guide also works really well if you're playing casually. So if you find yourself returning to world, um, like Capcom told us to, right? Mm. Make sure you listen Return to Capcom. To Return to oh. world. Speaking oh. of invaders, uh, hello. Hey. Hello. Joe. <laughs> yes, pickle. We got a good pickle. 
Um, but yeah, if you if you decide that you want to go and do that, we do have a track gathering guide out, so you can do that fast. It'll show you how to identify them, and then the fastest way to collect them. Asterisk. Mm -hmm. Have faster ways. They're linked. But we're just gonna ignore that devil, Joe. <laughs> um, um, why ignore him? Hunt him. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, Green, can you beat Devil Joe before uh, Bagel gets to Val? Let's yeah, find absolutely. out. Can you beat Devil Joe before I catch up? <laughs> Maybe imagine a Savage Joe. Imagine the absolute flex. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I but Bagel's so that. far behind. I hunted another monster. <laughs> Content. Uh, <laughs> so now we're gonna be going into Admiral. Uh, Green, do you want to talk about Admiral Skip here? Uh, yeah, so similar to Mercer Skip at the beginning of the run, the Admiral has a slow walk radius around him. Uh, unlike Mercer, though, it's a little weird. The radius where he starts you to forces you to start slow walking if you're already sprinting is a lot smaller than the radius to exit slow walk. So as long as we stay outside of his range, uh, we can run past him pretty quickly once he uh, gives us an opening up ahead. If we were to sit as close to him as possible, we would have to wait for him to get much further away from us before we could uh, actually move. Mm -hmm. And the handler is a nice little indication of that, too. If you notice her, she's kind of staggering while walking up. So um, that's how big of an influence he has when you're trying to get away from his slow cone. And just like that, Green got it. Now we're home free. Mm -hmm. Now we run away from the Admiral and the Handler. Yeah. But uh, unlike the other Elders, this section, uh, all the tracks are in the same place, and we actually have some monster cutscenes we have to view associated with each uh, set of tracks. So there is actually some uh, clever movement here coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, again, this is why it was important earlier to get that Nergi Horn Break, because uh, if we didn't get the Horn Break, we'd be just short enough of points where we'd have to come back uh, and look for more Nergi tracks. But luckily, both Green and Bagel got that uh, horn break on Zora 2. Luckily, Zora 2 horn break with SNS is pretty free. Because mm -hmm. of Slinger Burst. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> SNS fun. I will drop the rock, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, we do have a fun little thing here uh, that Green will be showing off. Um, we have our lore friend Dodo Gamma that comes up after this next cutscene. Um, he's a little, he's a little puppy, but you know sometimes we have to bully the puppy a little bit, and we do so with the rock drop. Yep. Uh, but before we do that, uh, after gathering these spikes, we're gonna view a cutscene for Ergon. And as soon as the cutscene ends, he's gonna roar and try to stagger us, and that's really annoying. And. Uh, so we're going to try really hard to time a dodge for this roar, or we can just run backwards and get outside the range. <laughs> it, it really is that simple. Just go back. I feel attacked. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, uh, I picked up some rocks for a special reason. You can see there's a set of spikes on the left, and I'm grabbing this set of spikes on the right first. And then after grabbing this set of spikes, I'm going to dodge into the cutscene trigger, which will warp me to the second set of spikes. But now the monster's here. We can drop this rock on him to stun him so we can pick up the spikes. Hey, it Green, how much? Four seconds. I was going to ask, how much yeah. time does that lose? <laughs> it loses time, but it's funny, so I do it in marathons. <laughs> uh, and then now Green's going to be coming up to the uh, last uh, monster cutscene, which is uh, Lava Sea Up or Lava Fish. Um, we're just gonna ignore him. <laughs> we're just gonna run away from him. So and, gonna... uh, coming up, you'll see why we actually do this section last. The game does intend us to do this first. We do it last so we can hit return from expedition here instead of having to open our map and uh, wait for all the areas we just discovered to fill in. Mm -hmm. Which is a time loss. Yeah, save six seconds or something. Mm -hmm. It's a mm -hmm. lot. Yeah. In the grand scheme of things here. Um, so this is actually pretty neat because we were supposed to talk to the next couple of NPCs. Um, and then they would tell us, hey, go find these monsters. Um, we already found the tracks for them, so we're just going to completely... Uh, this is actually pretty neat movement that I like uh, to see. Uh, that movement is after Nergi. 
Oh, it's after near you. Sorry. Yeah. Don't mind me. I like to jump ahead. I'm oh trying to gosh, be speedy like here, too. Two minutes behind. <laughs> <laughs> I just started gathering in the Elder's Recess. Uh. Uh. It's okay. You get to watch him do it, and then you get to watch me do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. So up next is uh, Nergigante. The script for this guy is a little weird. We're going to be trying to alternate spike breaks on his head with uh, claggers. However, his uh, part break thresholds get a little weird at the beginning, so we have to vary our script a little bit depending on if we get a horn break or not in area one. <clears throat> a small little tech here. We'll need this crystal burst later in the fight because it can flinch him. Uh, but we need something to wallbang with here. So we pick up this stone, which will drop that crystal burst on the floor in a much better spot for us to access it. I'm almost done. <laughs> so we start out with one wallbang. Flopper cut and a tenderize will weaken the head and drop a thorn pod that we can use for a second wall bang and to build up a KO. Um, so he is actually immune to being KO'd during a wall bang topple, so this will just leave him one, uh, one damage hit away from a KO when he stands up. One normal hit to get this weird head flinch out of the way, and then one shield bash gets the KO. And then now you're gonna keep an eye out for that horn break, correct? Yep. And we did not get it. And I actually have a very. Right, this should be okay. As long as he has spikes on his head, I'm okay. I'm okay. So now we're luring him down here because he is enraged. He'll follow us basically anywhere. Trying to get him under this rock. And I'm waiting to start my PR so it ends when he stands up and can be CC'd again. <laughs> well, as it takes so long. <laughs> Alright, so now we got that weird little head flinch, so now we'll drop the second rock on him. Ooh, no. Oh, wow, those hitboxes, right. I oh. missed the rock. Hmm. It's fine, it's fine, everything's fine. Uh. I also forgot to eat my mic seed. Um, it's fine, it's fine, everything's fine. Right, so now I just have to manually break these spikes on his head. Oh, actually, wait. Uh, he is unenraged, so I will go for a wall bang here. I almost got the bad opener where he misses the wall. Oh. Almost. Unfortunately, he did miss that wall bang, so this is going to be weird. Huh. You know, Biggle's going to be looking out for that horn as well. Got the horn break.
メダメムルヨンメルアイラーラムトラパダメムソリレジルナイスシベミシーアレン Not great, but good enough.、Mm -hmm. uh, Green, what happened? Ah. <laughs>、uh, ah,、uh, I missed the rock. Uh oh. Yeah, the second rock just. And the wall bang. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I missed a bunch of my PRs, so. Yeah. Uh, it was focus time. It s u b like when we, when we have to do those fights and we lose script, we really have to pay attention because, especially like monsters like Nergi and just the rest of these Elder Dragons, um, they can cart us. So we do have to pay attention. So apologize for、uh, serious time every now and then,、uh, especially during these hunts because we will get quiet.、Mm -hmm. It is all good. Don't worry about yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, no. I mean, we're going to do it anyways. Even if you were like, no, you need to keep talking. Like,、mm, we're like, no. No. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, it,、um, it's it's really funny because I'll, I'll get into runs, and if I'm on a good pace, I close chat. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun.、Uh, but yeah, so that's Nergi. Now we're going to be heading into、uh, unlocking the rest of the Elder Dragon hunts that we're going to be needing.、Um, like I was mentioning earlier, because I was being a little bit speedy myself. Um, what's a really neat thing here is that now the game's <clears> asking <throat> us to、uh, talk to the three NPCs that we've been talking to before the field team leader, the、uh, um, research base、um, NPC, as well as、uh, what's that third one called now?、Uh, the Huntsman? The Huntsman, thank Hunts you. Huntsman, it's FTL and、um, third fleet leader. Third fleet leader, thank you.、Um, So, the game wants us to go talk to them, and then it wants us to go and gather the tracks for the Elder Dragons. We've already done that. We've, we've skipped over that. So, now the game's like, oh, well, now just you know, turn in those tracks and go talk to them again and find out what monster you're going to be hunting.、Um, so, that's what Bagel and Green are doing now.、Uh, Green actually went ahead and also crafted the HR Pookie weapon for the Palico that he's going to be using during Xeno.、Um, And he also, and both Green and Big O are upgrading their SNS to its final form.、Um, strongest weapon in the game. Strongest weapon in the game, or for the base game.、Um, so, first up is going to be Teo.、Um, Teo's a little tricky.、Um, the opener here is that we are going to be dodging the roar、uh, and then going for a triple hit.、Um, after that, we're going to back up the next roar that happens and then mount it. What's really neat is that you can, once you get the mount on Teo, you can drop the mount and then flash it out of the air.、Uh, and then, just like any of the monsters that we flashed before,、uh, it gives us that time to、uh, go for a topple.、Um, and then, after that, we're going to start alternating our claggers just like we do with the other fights,、uh, as well as go for head topples. Yeah, the hardest part of the Teo fight is actually dodging the opening roar. <laughs> okay, fight's easy now. <laughs>、yep. Yeah, so green, green was able to dodge that roar, so he's good. So now he's gonna go triple hit for the wall bang. Or go for the triple hit. Back off that roar. Nice. And then the mount. Perfect. Look at that. Okay, fight's easy now. Guard slash. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. It's fine, I got good AI. Yeah, you got the tail swing. Oh, I made up that much time? Yeah. I'm only、yeah. like a minute behind now. Mm hmm. Uh, one thing to note,、uh, too, is that Teo's、uh, den is a lava bidet area.、Um, there are some attacks that will cause the lava floor to just start shooting up,、uh, which can disrupt the pseudo. Well, or the, I guess it's a real lock. No, it's, a full, it's, it's a full lock. It's a full lock. Yeah. yeah. The, only, the only way we lose the lock is if we make a mistake.、Mm -hmm. Or one specific attack. Alright, fight's easy. <laughs> 
Hey, look, it's the one specific attack. <laughs> yeah, so unfortunately, Green Spear did go to the t or the wing there. Nice. Uh, oh, hold on, I'm <laughs> kind of curious now. Uh, so, Green, are there any items you're looking for in particular at this uh, countdown since we do have the 60 seconds? Uh, the Mandragora for a max potion, and I'm going to try and make it to these Might Seeds, but I'm going to try and keep it quiet for Bagel. You're fine. Her. Yeah, you can talk about Kishala. <laughs> Val? Uh, whatever it is. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... This next fight is um, annoying. It is not a full lock, it is a pseudo lock. Uh, the monster has a body wide flinch threshold that takes priority over every other form of CC in the game. Uh, so we're going to be trying to alternate that threshold with claggers while trying to make sure we can consistently get our uh, slinger ammo off of tenderizing it. It's done correctly, it looks easy. It is a very weird, very long decision-making process throughout the entire fight. I missed my nice. last PR finisher. Yeah. <laughs> no. It went into the wing. I got a I got a weird head flail, and it pushed me into his legs, and I wasn't turning already. Mm -hmm. uh, that was still a really good Taya, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good luck on uh, on Val. Thank you. I'm about to get to the meme. <gasps> it's happening. I forgot to eat. Um. Oh, you'll be. I shall back to the camp. At this point, I think it's faster to just go. Bunga bunga. All right. Uh, so you can sling your burst to break vines. Fun you fact. You can do that. You can do that. <laughs> Raise your hand if you just learned that. <laughs> <clears throat> and now we hope for good AI to get this wall bang quickly. This is the second best option. Big chompies. Uh, Green, did you talk about Fluvia? Uh, no. Oh, uh, okay. This smoke coming off of his body and uh, will also be generated from his attacks is just constant tick damage, and if it ticks you enough, it will cut your maximum health in half. Uh, this fight is one of the main reasons we gather max potions, because most of the time, even if you're playing well, uh, you're going to need at least one heal in this fight. Ah, uh, that's not good. Hmm. Uh, another thing that we're going to be on the lookout for are going to be the small gyros that come up. Um, sometimes they're friend and they will paralyze Val. Um, sometimes they're foe and they paralyze us. Ow. Ooh. And so there's the Fluvia proc on green. As you notice, now his health is cut down in half. Uh, no other healing items work until he gets that uh, gets rid of it using the Nullberry, which he did. And he was able to use the Max Potion as well. And there are the great heroes, or the girls that we're talking about. And they paralyzed uh, Val. Good. Okay. We are back on track. Nice. Come on. 
Dude, I always beam. bait this out. Yeah, I always bait out beam. Um, you're fine to keep talking though, um, like when you need to. I'm good. Yeah. Dude, you guys are still both fighting right now. Yeah, I just want to make sure. Mm hmm. So the main reason these claggers are important is clutching on and doing this tenderized attack with the sword and shield does drop piercing pod, which is what we're using to kind of shotgun him and get him into that flinch. Like that. <laughs> yep. Uh, we do want to make sure we also um, slay Val here. Um, if he does transition, it is a long walk um, to the next area. Uh, and if we don't catch up to Val in time, he'll actually transition back into this nest area. Um, so we're going we're gonna to hope for the best here, chat. But it looks like these are still going really well for both our runners. Nice. Well done, Grin. Yeah. And so green's just going to be gathering a couple more components here the god bugs um with the elder all the elder dragons uh we do have that 60, 60 second um quest timer um so it gives us enough time to gather other items like the flash bugs that we might need um any extra items might seeds things like that Biggo's getting really consistent with his claggers. Uh, so those of you with a sharp eye may have noticed earlier we didn't actually unlock all three Elder Dragon quests. Reason is, after completing two of them, we got put back here at the commander, and the field team leader is right on the path we need to take to the quest board. So we unlock the last quest here, and I talked to him twice. <laughs> So now Green's going to start going into uh, Kushala Jaora. Uh, Green, do you want to talk a little bit about Kushala? Yeah. So Kushala is the only Elder Dragon where if we do it right, he does not clagger. He only has a head top. Um, the rough part of this fight is the opening wall bang. After that, the only thing we really have to worry about is accidentally dealing too much damage to the head. But as long as we track our damage... Uh, well, uh, his AI will never be a factor in this fight. Only our timing and positioning will be. Mm -hmm. And Big O's now uh, done with Val. Well, Pretty done. good. Yeah. I had to rush to PR because I thought I was going to overdamage. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it came out a little bit slower. Mm -hmm. uh, so green uh, pretty early in the, in the slinger burst. Gotcha. Oh, so yeah, so green's now going to start with the opener here. Ooh, that was an... an hmm. Yeah, he still got it. Uh, interesting movement there from the monster, but he still was able to get that wall ping. Uh, so now he's going to go for the... Uh, start going for the full lock. Nice. That was the easy one. You can't, <laughs> you really can't over damage on that one. 
Uh, sub five, nice. Oh my god, four nice. decorations, help. Hmm. <laughs> Sell them all. But yeah, now Green's gonna keep an eye out, making sure that he doesn't over damage here to lose the lock. So far, so good. Bagel's gonna start going into Kashala. Ooh. Oh, good AI. Okay. <laughs> that was that was good. Yeah, so luckily Kashala was just a couple of hits for the for the head uh toppled there. So Bagel's gonna start with the opener as well. Flash bang straight into the clutch claw. He's gonna do it three times. Then go for wall bang. We also got the same AI. Interesting. Nice. They're they're like um flopping animations are perfectly synced up for a second. It was really weird. Yeah, it was <laughs> <laughs> it was interesting to watch there. <laughs> Boy, a ledge. Yeah, ledges are our worst enemies here in the game. You thought Xenojiva was the big bad? No, it's ledges. Uh, luckily, Biggles doing really well on this health lock here, adjusting appropriately. The head isn't getting absorbed into the floor, which is good. Green's just dancing away. So what was that, Johnny? Yep. Talk Anyways. About it again, or... <laughs> See? Oh Anymore. my gosh, this is so hard. Why can't I just have like a nice, easy Kushala? <laughs> Why can't you be normal? <laughs> Monster Hunter moment. <laughs> <laughs> just, just the Monster Hunter things. Yeah. He's making me try, dude. <laughs> He's like, I heard you want to give a show. Oh, see on the ground. Oh wow. <laughs> okay. I'll So this is nice. the final quest, uh, <gasps> which does mean we're bringing back the cat. I didn't yeah, bring that entire time. I oh. Yeah, I was worried for you there. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see your chest rise and I was like, is he OK? <laughs> Dude, I had a head underground. I had a head on the ledge. I had a I had a uh, falling shield bash that pushed me to the wrong side of the head twice. You were fine. Uh, you adjusted. It's still sub three, which I am upset yeah. about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, uh, Kushala has his headlock. Zeno has his handlock. Uh, unfortunately, Green is not getting the AI he wants. The better AI here would be Runnies towards the rock drop. But Zeno's kind of saying no to that right now. <laughs> oh, my God. I believe. Still Please, triple card. Yeah, I was gonna say, just don't triple card, you'll be fine. Oh, uh, this should hit. Don't hit the head. That hit the head. I don't like that. Um, that oh, shouldn't hit be a the problem. Head. Uh -oh. Yeah. But if I land a finisher into the head later, he's gonna go into his like super critical mode a lot sooner, mm -hmm. which makes things a lot slower and a lot harder. Yeah. 
uh, super critical makes the hand lock stop working just entirely. The hand lock no longer exists in super critical, and we think it's tied to the head break. Yeah. Because as long as we don't break the head, he dies before he ever goes super critical. Mm hmm. Nice. I had flames before the war. You there. were fine. <laughs> Uh, so now green's all set up for the handlock here. So you're just going to see Xenol topple over and over again. Uh, this fight is uh, two phases. So the first phase does start in this beginning area here. Uh, once we do enough damage, um, Xenol's going to fly up uh, to the next area. Uh, that was an intentional whiff because that now sets me up to do this. Uh, intentionally rush this PR. This will put his hand one hit away from a topple in phase two. Uh, never mind, I was too late. Hmm. I'm in slinger burst mode. And yeah, now we're gonna go uh, into the second phase of the Xeno Jiva fight. Uh, does he get Narnia? No. Uh, there is a chance of Xeno Jiva uh, just being on the other side of this um, stadium here. Uh, but luckily, Green did not get that Narnia. Uh, we call it uh, go to Narnia here. Yep. Uh, Gilly Mantle there to bait out a roar. Claw Uppercut does have super armor on it and does a half tenderize. So that lets me get the tenderize back there very quickly. Stop sneezing. <laughs> Run at me, you coward. <laughs> Thank you. There Lynch it is. There, I think my finisher clipped into the wing. Yeah. Okay, now uh, Bagel's going to start setting up with the hand lock as well, so tenderize the arm. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. You're fine. Oh, yeah, you got the recovery off of that. That was I'm, I'm so bad at this game. All right, let's. This is fine. This is less. So many less fine. Fortunately, the handbrake takes forever, and I missed my opportunity to get the handbrake easily. So we're gonna waste some time here. Green does have to sharpen here because his weapon did go into white sharpness. Uh, We're almost almost done with white sharpness. Sorry. Ideally, we never have to sharpen in here, but since I've lost the lock a few times, it means I'm going to go through sharpness a lot quicker. You know, Big is going to start entering uh, phase two here.
Oh, yeah, sorry. That mm. was. <laughs> well, GG. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure there's like a cutscene or something after, yeah. Now it's time for Jal to bring it home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, time ends the moment Xeno dies. Gotcha, gotcha. We just end up skipping that like little that little fanfare cut scheme uh, uh, a little quick because it's just you know force of habit. I had to heal because my palico doesn't want to do that. Yeah. I might have to do it again too. Still on fire. All right, oh, we're good. Time. time. GG. <sighs> Five forty. Whew. All <laughs> right. So that that fight is hard. Yeah. yeah. I got Green. a 615. Green's it's okay, almost it's fine. Green's almost super crit. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, that's scary. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, I mean, oh. honestly, like, super... Other than uh, the Anjanath, my high rank Anjanath, I think we both did really well. Yeah. Uh, give it, given, like, marathon setting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, times are pretty good, so GG. Yeah. yeah. Uh, finishing, I mean, like, I don't know, was that 30 seconds? Within each other, give uh, or take forty. Forty, yeah. Uh, okay, so <laughs> that's, that's good. actually really good. Uh, when we practiced last night, it was um, green up thirty, me up forty, and then you up thirty. Uh, last night, something like that. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, it was something like that. So very, very, very similar. Um, and it, I mean, that was really close. Just the fact that, <laughs> not to toot our own horns, but just the fact <laughs> that we can stay within a minute of each other in this game is is beyond belief sure for sure yeah any uh, any shout outs y'all want to do uh green you first uh shout out to uh jal bagel and dj johnny for being here uh, <laughs> and to the monster hunter speedrun community for uh being cool and helping optimize this game so much yeah, real, really big shout outs to um, uh, Monster Hunter Speedrunning MHSR, um, especially uh, Moss TKM, who pioneered SNS in this speedrun, because without him, we would not have any of these scripts, or at least the majority of them. Um, he, he put in a, a ton of work. Uh, Moss TKM is a Japanese speedrunner and occasionally streams and uh, uploads to YouTube, so you should go check him out. Um, and then, yeah, just the entirety of the, the Monster Hunter community, my community, the Bagel Shop. I appreciate you guys being here. I see you all in there uh, memeing, and I appreciate you all. Uh, green for pushing me to be better at this game and uh johnny for doing the same um couldn't do it without you guys uh and yeah thank you guys for for watching thank you every hey shout out to everyone in chat watching this you guys are cool yeah. also return to world mm -hmm. um because this game is fun and if you're interested uh if you're interested in learning this speed run um green johnny and i are working on a uh, beginner tutorial routing guide for this um i say the three of us are working on it uh, i'm supposed to make the video and have been supposed to do this for <laughs> years now uh we're, tr we're, tr we're gonna try to have it finished by the end of march so keep keep um keep an eye out for that if you're interested in learning this speed run you can do it with any weapon um every weapon can finish the speed run with varying degrees of success so if you're like man i really want to do this but i like dual blades do it you could do it um you can absolutely do it Hammer, so, hammer. Uh, yeah. hammer, ha no, okay, hammer. but like hammer, <laughs> all memes aside, hammer is the best learning weapon for the speed run. I'm, I'm not Got even it. joking. Awesome. Every time someone's like, I want to learn it, what weapon should I start using? I'm like hammer every time. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, uh, yeah, thank you all so much again. Please be sure to drop a follow to everybody if you enjoyed any part of the speed run. Uh, Job Eagle, Green Speed 18, and DJ Johnny, all that's all their Twitch names. Uh, definitely go drop them all follows. Um, thank you both so, so much for running this. Thank you, DJ Johnny, for commentating. And uh, before we go, okay, the only other announcement I have is that I'll actually be back hosting two more specials later this week. Uh, I'll be hosting a Paper Mario Thousand Year Door uh, mm -hmm. Any% percent speed run on Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern. And then I will be hosting slash running uh, Pokemon Platinum Elite Four Round 2 speed run on Sunday. That'll be 1 p.m. Eastern. So... If you want to hear my voice again, tune in back for those. It'll be right here on Games Unquick, uh, Twitch.tv slash Games Unquick. And we're not actually done for the day. Uh, there's more live speedrunning content coming up with Out of Bounds. So uh, we'll be back right after that break with that. So see you in a bit.